for real starting in three two one go there you go that looks better all right so this is a brand new ocarina of time 100 percent task no srm uh you guys want to talk about this new test yeah so i'm migu i did um most of the routing for this task, I'm kind of like the mastermind, I guess. Um, and yeah. uh, we've been working on it for, I guess I started working on the route about two years ago, and then started working together on it, like, earlier this year. Well, yeah, basically all this year, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, um, but yeah. it's still, uh, I think we still went pretty fast for how long this is, right? Pretty nice. Um, yeah, this is most tasks this long do not get finished in under a year. And so this is well, well, they don't get finished at all. Yeah, yeah, they. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that that's also true. They also just don't get finished. Yeah, the last um, hundred percent task for this game was what twenty fifteen. Yeah, and eight years ago, and it's yeah, the time full was... of spices and mm -hmm. it's yeah. Just it was it. it was a task for its era for sure. It 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 sure was. And I think the time was three forty seven, right? Which is actually, uh, yeah, very close yeah, to the uh, current, current RTA, RTA yeah. record, isn't it? Yeah, Although I don't know how the timing right, differently is, but yeah, current <laughs> RTA record um, with intro skip timing is I think three three forty five, and that had mm -hmm. intro, so I guess it'd be like a minute or two off. Yeah, so the old but, task yeah. would still be faster. Yeah, which quick oh. quick note yeah, about timing. So uh, this a task will always start from the very beginning of the game, like power on. So this will include the intro, which uh, RTA timing wouldn't. So this is about three minutes extra if you want to directly compare this to RTA. Uh, Z, do you want to just give the definition of one hundred percent? Oh yeah. So so one hundred percent is uh, all. Um, all dungeons, all gold skulltulas, all hearts, all uh, capacity upgrades, all items, all that stuff. And also, uh, so 100% has what's known as a source requirement rule, where there are glitches in this game where you can kind of glitch items into your inventory. And that's not explicitly banned, that is allowed in the run. However, for, a run, for an item to count towards 100%, you need to get it from its original source, so like the, the normal way you would get that item. So for example, um, gold Skulltulas, there's Gold Skulltula duping glitches, which uh, you can do if for some reason you would want to dupe Skulltulas to get a certain Skulltula count early. However, you would still need to get each individual Gold Skulltula. Uh, same with um, capacity upgrades and stuff like that. Uh, so this will actually be getting every item uh, as as you would normally get it. And I guess I should also mention that this is no SRM. Um, SRM, the SRM 100% run is like very different if you've seen it. Yeah, for, for, anyone, that know, for anyone that doesn't know what SRM is, it's a, a very powerful memory manipulation glitch. Uh, basically changes the entire run. Uh, it's it's very complicated, it's a bit too much to get into right now, but it's uh, a super different run. And also, this run is being done on N64 1.0. Uh, so 1.0 and other versions, uh, which, for example, uh, RTA runs mainly run on Wii VC. They each have their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, but th this run in particular was done on 1.0 for a few different advantages that I guess we'll probably get into later on. Yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll yeah. come up later. We uh, up we actually yeah. don't know whether which version is truly fastest because um, there's just uh, problem is on VC, there's so many different possible routes to choose from, but it just turned out that on N64, I realized that there's this route that we have is just turns out to be really good, and there isn't much competition from what I can tell. So that's the main reason that uh, this one is actually on. Well, we don't even know it's necessarily fastest, but so it's the, I think it's the route's the, really cool. It's the simpler routing version. Yeah, kind of. And also, I think the route's probably the coolest as well, cooler than uh, VC routes. Because nice. of how well it works out. So, but I mean, the reason why uh, 1.0 does save time is because of some version inclusive glitches, which we'll um, get into later when they come up. 
So if she think fast, West escape. Oh. Nice. Oh yeah, so so explaining that, so uh, by doing uh, by getting high speed in the water, if you hold very slightly outside the dead zone of the control stick, you can preserve that speed. And so right there, there was a jump slash uh, against a little um, pillar in the water, which got high backward speed from the jump slash. Continue that speed all the way to the guard, and then talk to him with that high speed, which allows you to clip into him and then get out of the forest early. And uh, you may have seen that uh, we're side hopping a lot. I want to just briefly touch on, upon the basic movement so you know why. Um, when Link is walking, he has a speed of 5.5. .5. When he's rolling, it goes up to 8.25 and then back down again. When he's back walking, it's a constant 8.25, albeit with a bit of a uh, uh, like warming up period to it. Uh, Backflipping is 6 speed, and side hopping is 8.5. So that means side hopping is just strictly fastest as a child. As an adult, you walk and roll and backwalk a little faster. You go up to a, a high of 9 speed. So backwalking becomes faster for really long distances. But when you have to go short distances, side hopping is still faster because the backwalking takes time to get up to speed. And right here, there's, there's an owl that we don't want to talk to. Um, owls are pretty weak creatures, there's a plenty of ways to skip them. You can frame perfect pause, you can ESS, you can target something in their range. Uh, you can pull out weapons and put them away again. There's plenty of ways. And that would end up being dust for this case. And uh, here's our first instance of an ace light. Um, so we're actually going to Zora's River right now, um, because uh, we have to wait for um, a day cycle to enter to get to Zelda later on. So we're going to try to do as much as we can before it turns day. And there was time to go here and do another ace slide to clip through those boulders and get beans. Very nice. Yeah, so for A slides and C slides, if you shield damage during the inv invincibility frames of your roll, you can get a powerful recoil of negative 18 speed. And then you can keep the speed with two different methods, either switching to neutral and back to full input on the analog stick, or pressing target every other frame because both of those uh, have the effect of conserving your speed. And then uh, we did a West That to CAC, where we stayed in the water the entire time, uh, because it's actually slightly faster, because the water pushes you, because you're going downstream. Uh, so the reason for sword slashing into the loading zone, it's not faster or slower for the loading zone itself, whether you like slash or do a slide into the loading zone, it has no effect on the actual load time. But uh, the reason for the slash is so that you have no speed when coming out the other side. And that way, in that specific case, uh, when doing the slash when leaving Zora's River, uh, that puts you in a better position for an instant west. Rather than if you were walking at full speed out of the loading zone, you'd have to kind of back up a bit to get a good west. Yeah, and then for... we want to collect the... The cuckoo's here to, to give us a bottle, because bottles are very powerful in this game. Um, whether or not this cuckoo segment is actually optimal is hard to say, because there's so much variance on RNG and where they run and where they go, and even the jump slash is arguable if it's optimal, because sometimes you you, you can get the, the, the like, cuckoo near the, the back right, near the, the graveyard, you can get that to be very far towards uh, uh, the stairs, and then it's probably faster to just fly over with it, but you can also get it to be really close to the pen, and then it's faster to jump, slash, and yeah. it's There's so much variance in, in this segment that it's hard to, to say what is really optimal for this segment. 
Yeah, Krakos are a nightmare. I've, I've only done like low tads of Krakos at, at most, and even that is a pain. I know that. Uh, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, uh, so that was a <laughs> Navi dive. If you uh, talk to Navi right as you're falling off a ledge, uh, Link will fall off a ledge and not interact with water while talking to Navi, uh, which allows you to just fall straight through the water and get to Bomb the Well early. And Bomb the Well is really good to be early, uh, really good to come here early because there are some very good items here that help a lot in the early game. And while, and while we're in Bomb's Well to um, yeah, get Bomb Shoes, as you just uh, alluded to, we're also going to get all of the Skulltulas, um, because we don't want to have to do two trips to Bomb the Well. So this is something that some uh, some people have tried to do RTA, but never really... I guess yeah, I guess some SFM routes have done this, but... Um, one thing oh, that uh, yeah, RTA is sometimes... It would be fast for RTA too, but just a little bit too... Like yeah, too oh RNG for this hover. That mega voice. I've, see, I've seen plenty of uh, experimenting streams from CFG. Oh uh, yes, I have spent many there. hours. <laughs> I, I've spent many hours in this room alone trying to get yeah, a consistent yeah. RTA method of that. But yeah, uh, coming here to get those sculptures early with hovering saves a lot of time, so you don't have to backtrack here later. And we can waste some time here by just walking and uh, fall down. And a nice effect of doing the same like cutscene esque dive with a uh, ocarina instead is that it also prevents rooms loading. So now we're in the basement without the uh, loading zone activated. Yeah, and, and then the water, the up. water from the above part stays loaded, and that water extends downwards infinitely. And so you can uh, just swim up the water and land in this room with the bomb shoes. And then the bomb shoes can also be used to clip through vines. Which is another good way to get out of bounds and go directly to dead hand. One trip bottom well probably saves around a minute in this route, maybe a little less, something like that. It really, it depends on like exactly how you route the next child segment as well. Yeah, um, it doesn't. The last VC route, the uh, the one I know about. It wouldn't save that much time because you end up in yeah like nearby af anyway. But I don't think this route ends up nearby anyway, so we'd have to go a bit out of our way to to get back into the wall. So there's lens. And yeah, another while we're here, just get everything. Yeah, another vine clip there, the Skulltula is used there. And then this gets you out of bounds again, swimming more out of bounds water. And yeah, this gets to the like like room. This has a very convenient Hylian shield. And then you can also get the Skulltula with a quick cover. And uh, we can save warp. Save warping yeah, takes so you to the beginning of the dungeon, and then we can leave really easily. <laughs> yeah, quick save warps is one nice thing about N64. Yeah, it's like several seconds faster than a VC save warp. So, bomb shoes. Bomb shoes are really nice. We're gonna use a lot of bomb shoes in this run. We're gonna use a lot. Are you guys counting? <laughs> yeah. I was trying to count them, like, by memory the other day, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> That's a about. lot. Yeah. But yeah, here's our first instance of a Hess, which works similar to A-slide and C-slide, but now that we have bomb shoes, we can get it on command, and we don't need to, to have an enemy to do it for us. And uh, we barely made it in, out of CAC while the drawbridge was um, still down. Yeah, it turns night while we are slashing the tube, yeah. actually. Yeah, and so yeah. the thing with that drawbridge is uh, the chains... If you don't look at the bridge, uh, and the bridge goes up, if if the last time you looked at it, the chains were down, you can still get on the chain. And then as soon as you load the bridge uh, by moving the camera in range of it, then it'll instantly go up and you'll just get teleported up with the chains. So, CFD, you okay. may want to get started on explaining RBA real quick. Oh, well, uh, uh, first quick ex explanation of that out of bounds is just, uh, yeah. there's like a little opening above the doors there. So you can actually get out of bounds and enter uh, enter the shops at night. 
breaking in early. But yeah, RBA. So uh, RBA is reverse bottle adventure. It's a glitch where you get a bottle on your B button, and uh, you can modify parts of your inventory based on what you catch on B and what you what item you have on C right. Where the item on C right will determine what gets modified, and the item on B will determine what number it gets modified to. Um, so that'll be coming up very soon. Uh, first, this clip here. Uh, when you first enter Hyrule Castle, uh, you actually need to reload the re reload the area once in order to get Malin to spawn. Um, that clip is actually just the fastest way because otherwise you have to leave uh, and reload. Well, it's actually the slowest way, but it, it's, it's it's only one loading zone, so it wastes more time of day, which yeah, is it's, what we want. It's slower real time, faster game time, because you're wasting more time a day. But yeah, so that bottle catch right there, if you saw there, uh, the bottle went over the B button. And so with uh, Lens of Truth on C right, it will actually modify an item slot in the inventory. I believe two item slots to the right of Lens of Truth. Uh, so yeah, that yeah, is... Yeah. Is that hammer slot? Hammer yeah, slot. Yeah, yeah. Hammer, hammer so now we have yeah. bugs and hammer slot. Yeah, and then there will be a lot more of that in the run to do various different modifications. That'll speed up. So, a bunch uh, right now. So, yeah, here we're going to do um, dropping with the empty bottle in C, right? That'll put an empty bottle in the third bottle slot. And then catch with bean C, right? Which will put a Bottle with bugs in the light arrow slot, and then the big one, catching with Poe C right, um, gives us 29 bomb shoes. Yeah, Poe is Poe is a really big one because being able to refill your bomb shoes on command is just super important. Because bomb shoes are very limited in this game; you can basically only get them from like a select number of chests and like bomb shoe shop, carpet salesman. Uh, a lot of places that are not good to go out of your way for, and with RBA you can just freely refill your bomb shoes whenever you want. And here's another. We push the box instance. so that we can do mega flip over here. Yeah. Another instance yeah. of a minus eighteen speed trick. Then for guards, they can only catch you if you have a downwards velocity of minus four or greater. Um, if you side up frame perfectly, you never have that. So, they just can't see you. It's that simple. Well, that, that's actually faster to do a nice slide there. <laughs> yeah, nice. Also, uh, what, it's what's badly faster? <laughs> yes. What's cool about um, some of those uh, like double bomb chew things that they're doing there is uh, when you, if you send two bomb chews really quickly, they can actually hit each other and blow up earlier than they would otherwise normally blow up, and that's a really fast way to get like an instant Z slide or Hess or A slide or whatever you need. Yeah. So a lot of the time, well. If we have sword on the B button, we only need one chew, because then we can just slash it. Which is yeah. pretty fast. And then, if we don't have that available, then if there's a wall next to us, then we can do a twisted chew. However, if there's not a wall, and we don't have sword, then we have to do some double chew stuff. Where we use two chews for a single slide. And it's worth noting, we could just equip sword too, but that takes time to open the pause menu and equip sword, and it's just faster to take a few time losses from not having sword in this section. Yeah, also, uh, someone asked earlier about um, how this looks like it's uh, on N64 and not uh, on emulator like tasks normally are. Uh, you want to talk about how this task was made? Um, yeah, uh, sure, this... The entirety of this task is recorded on GC, uh, both on on VVC Inject 1.0 and also on Dolphin. Um, so that means it can be played back on any 1.0 GC version on any console. So it can be played back on N64 1.0, and can be played back on VVC 1.0 Inject. Um, 
It can be played back on Bishawk 1.0 if you want. Um, it can be played back on on everything, as long as you have you can install GC on it. Yeah, and then uh, it's really cool because that essentially means it's like instantly uh, console compatible. Whereas a lot of a lot of tasks, especially N64 tasks, have issues um, running correctly on console. But this means that uh, this what you're watching right now is a console playback of this test. This is this yeah. is real N64. This is N64. Uh, it is not strictly task videos legal because task videos require you to use vanilla ROMs. But what do you value more, using the vanilla ROM or? being able to play it back on console. I think being able to play it back on console is a lot cooler than it being in an, 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 on an official ROM on an emulator. Yeah, console console verification, I think, is uh, very significant. I think console verification should be above a, a, an official ROM on an emulator. But, yeah. That's that's a political discussion, discussion I don't want to get into with test videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're going straight to template time. Yep, so... Like in uh, uh, most, pretty much every young percent route, after getting Bomb Chews, Zelda Zelda Bye, you can do a Dwarf Time Skip. Pretty simple. Just get, get just, snarky with the door. Just side hop. Mm-hmm. Also, in case you're wondering about that stick on B, whenever you die with uh, bottle on B, like we did after um, the Zelda by for the Zelda Zelda by cutscene skip, I put stick on B instead, and it doesn't really matter because we don't even have any sticks, and that'll be important later. Actually, pretty soon that we don't have any sticks, but first we have this cutscene. Yeah, yeah, it's entirely useless that we have stick on B here because when you go back to child, you always get forced uh, sword on B, so. It does nothing. We don't even get easy bottle and B. I guess I want, I want to talk a little more about the um, history of this run. So let's see, back in 2021, when I first got inspired to really start thinking about this, that was when uh, Text Transfer Glitch was found. So Highland Freddy found a way to get uh, the Broken Horn Sword as child on 1.0. And then throughout the year, the next few months, even more things were found. Some of them that were 1.0 exclusive and some of them that were just really useful for our tasks. And so by the end of 2021, I was working on, started thinking about this route. And then over the next year, I like slowly thought about different options. And then like, I think, yeah, November, 2022. So just about a year ago now is when I, I found another little trick which was very helpful for this route. Um, and it really just like made me think that this route is just uh, really good, basically. We'll see that later. Um, well, I think this route is really good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so then... I guess then March of 2023 is when uh, we started actually tasking it. Pretty much right after, uh, right after the um, February twenty first low tide, actually, when I asked Pancake if he um, wanted to work on this, I was thinking that oh, I maybe can we can get a group of people to work on this task because the big project we always share work. But then he went ham, he just did all, did it all very fast. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever introduced myself, but but I am Pancake. I. I... I, I made most of this task, um, well, yeah, but at least the, the input, uh, I didn't do any routing. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I tasked a little bit, but then Pancake improved it all, so... <laughs> but, yeah, I, I spent almost all of my free time this entire year <laughs> on it. It was... Uh, 
8 hours of work, 8 hours of tasking, 8 hours of sleep, uh, on that grind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and, and even so, it's probably and also very likely not optimal. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's it's very hard to get a truly optimal yeah. cast of this game because there are so many options for literally everything you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we might point out some of the some of the uh, things that known improvements that there could be. I don't think there are any yet, but uh, no, I think uh, this. This part is is pretty uh, pretty yeah, good. Th- this this cutscene probably is not improvable. <laughs> well, there is that one theoretical, technically works cutscene skip that would never ever be faster in any circumstance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Surely it's faster in some SRM setting, maybe in maybe if you create <laughs> the. Most uh, arbitrary rule long. set of all time, specifically, <laughs> uh, specifically tailored specifically to, to make it work. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, th- there is like a technical cutscene skip for this cutscene where you uh, is it with uh, I think Frozen Timer and Sun Song uh, to skip the cut, or maybe it's just Frozen Timer. But what I remember was not Frozen Timer, but just like doing a Requiem Void Warp with the collapse timer and just yeah, yeah having, I it, think that's having it. it expire right when you get master sword yeah but basically it's it's some uh complicated timer shenanigans that are is absolutely not faster yeah, so now we're told oh i love the z slide <laughs> z slide across market is really fun to do All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go to Lon Lon. This is a little bit different from most RT routes. Uh, and the reason why is because we're actually never going to be in Hyrule Field as adults after this starting segment. Yeah, we, we're, we're never going to be back here. So this is the closest time to... What we're going to do is going to hover over the fence to steal a Pona. Yeah, so this is just like... Uh... Breath of the Wild uh, Glitchless Peace Runs, uh, you need a horse to go fast. Obligatory Breath of the Wild speedrun reference. <laughs> <laughs> Had to fit it in there. <laughs> Except the horse isn't even faster than... No, the horse is very slow, <laughs> yeah. which is why we get off it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and just blow up right on the pony. Yeah, we don't... She's not strictly required for 100%, but she is required for Gerudo Archery, yeah, so she, we have to rescue in, her at some point. She's indirectly required because of uh, yeah. Yeah, the Gerudo Archery seg- segment. And here we kill a Poe with bomb cheese, yeah. Yep. Great way to kill a big Poe. Then we are heading straight back into market. So that, that big Poe kill uh, has actually been either proposed or I think it might have been in a few RTA routes. But uh, the really fun thing about it is that the big Poe spawn is random if you are not on Epona. Which, thankfully, a task doesn't have to deal with too much, but uh, for RTA, that was really fun. <laughs> doesn't sound like you thought it was very fun. <laughs> the setup to kill the Poe was fun. Getting it to spawn wasn't. So, here's Equip Swap, which is uh, a trick that lets us equip an item on the pause screen over another item on the pause screen by doing a frame perfect input while transitioning between screens. Uh, it only works on items that are all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Uh, well, the item it has to equip over has to be all the way on the left or all the way to the right. Um, so therefore, it was very important that we didn't get a stick, because on the right side we have Zelda's letter, which we can't equip over as adult. And on the left side, if we had stick, we wouldn't be able to do it on the left side either, because we can't equip stick as adult either. So therefore, the only option we had is we just have a bottle on the left as the only one, and then we can equip over it with another bottle. Yeah, and this is a really nice time save over RTA, because uh, the way RTA does this is a bit of a more complicated method involving magic arrows, because in RTA's case, uh, you you have sticks on the left side, so you can't do it on that side. And on the right side, you have magic spells, which you could theoretically 
equip swap over and then turn it into a bottle and then your 100% run is invalid because you don't have the item anymore. Um, and that's a bit slower because of like constantly equipping magic arrows and stuff and so this is nice and fast not having to like just doing the base uh, equip swap um, necessary. Yeah, so this, this saves a fair bit of, of time just in the menu over RTA. And then, yeah. We yeah, also the main reason we do this model earlier. Yeah, the Deluxe Bell is nice. And also the main reason we really do this now is, again, because we're here now. It's the least detour, turns out. We also, uh, when we duped over that bottle one, it actually overwrote the Poe we got. So we're going to have to get another Poe. The next boat we get will last the rest of the run. Yeah, pro probably a good extra thing to mention is that when, when doing equip swap, if you are equip swapping with a bottle and you change the contents of that bottle by either catching or dropping something, then the item slot that you overwrote with equip swap will also uh, be overridden with, a, with that bottle. Yeah. And then like every good Ocarina of Time speed run, we're heading off to Kakarika. And uh, we're just uh, going right past uh, the cuckoo lady. But you need her for the for the big Orn quest. Oh, you're right. I'm sure we'll come back for her later. Yeah, we'll have to go back to her. Yeah, it is quite a quite a long trade quest though, so maybe we should have gotten it now. Here's a clip to enter the royal tomb. Yeah. This, yeah. You can just like ground clip in with uh, a jump slash. And yeah, no uh, need for silly stairs tricks here. No need for Zelda's lullaby. Yeah, no question marks, Chad. Yeah, that that one completely made sense. So that's not pass only. Solid rock. Uh, so, so the deal with that clip in RTA in an RTA setting is it it is theoretically faster in an RTA setting, uh, but you really want to pause buffer it, and with the necessary pause buffers, it becomes like close to even. Uh, with good buffering, it should still theoretically be faster, um, but also in some cases you'll have a bottle on your B button there, and so you won't even have sword equipped anyway in order to do it. Um, so essentially, it's like. Kind, it could be worth it in RTA settings in some cases by a very small amount, depending on the situation. And then we can just leave after we got some song. The song is also really nice because it this cutscene actually just sets the time to night, and that means we can collect a bunch of scorchulas in the next section. Now we're getting another Poe um, while pulling the grave. You can um, enter the grave while the little Poe text yeah, comes up. Great, uh, great way to collect the Poe and save a little bit of time. Guess a Dampe time. I right, guess, guess Dampe time, guys. A lot of these people aren't, aren't so easy to fool, huh? They know it'll be faster than an RTA. I also, so uh, a little, so you might be wondering why there's no like uh, a sliding or hessing or anything here. Uh, so Dampe actually behaves really strange where if you try to do uh, one of the high speed tricks, he starts moving in a really weird way where he like goes backwards and goes out of bounds and stuff. So it's actually not faster to hess, z slide, a slide, whatever you want there, because it just messes up Dampe's movement. Yeah, so this is this is just a forty-two. It's just it's just matching the MST task. I I I don't see a forty-one being being possible if now there's two tasks in a row that are just getting forty twos. Well, that, that'll have to be some. I have to find some some more glitchy ledge climbs or something. <laughs> 
You can get uh, 41 if you start from below. But that kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah, if you start from below, you have to, like, um, it, it saves a little a bit of time in the race, but it, it takes longer to actually jump down and then talk to Dampe rather than talk, talking to Dampe on the upper ledge. There's also a handful of other things you can do to uh, manipulate the timer to get a lower race time that isn't actually faster in real time. Well, we actually have a bottle on our C buttons right now, which we could be mashing during side hops to pause the timer, so we could get so. a lower time. I guess that's true. Do you want to cheat? But uh, there's no cheating here. <clears throat> oh, Dampe actually keeps on moving while you drop bugs, so we can overlap that a little bit. Now we're doing RBA again. Oh wow, that was some nice N64 lag. <laughs> we got uh, 29 bomb juice again, and then we caught again with hookshot on C right. And that gives us another uh, fake bottle, this time in the ice arrow slot. Are you guys keeping so track of a, bottles and a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of uh, extra bugs in your inventory now. Those will be handy later on. I so here's a... a... <laughs> that seems skip for the Song of Storm. So this works something like you pull out the ocarina next to the Song of Time block while the upper room is still loaded, I think. And that'll yeah, just... they, they, they share the same flag for starting the ocarina cutscene. So... Because they share the flag, you activate like both of them at once or something. I don't know how it works exactly, but it's it's whack. Wait, uh, okay. How did you do the side hops without triggering the A press uh, for that? Uh, if you do it frame perfectly, it doesn't register. Interesting. I I don't know why. <laughs> oh oh, I think I know. Yeah, there's like um. Wait, no. Never mind. I'm I'm gonna say something wrong. Oh, we just collected that uh, Sculptula and the Heart Piece. Um, again, this is the last time we're going to be an adult. Or, we're going to be in CAC as an adult, so collect everything while we're here. Yeah. Did anyone notice the time we just lost? Oh, yeah. We climbed, <laughs> we climbed the fence to hookshot the roof instead of just hookshotting the roof from the ground. So we, we oh, lost yeah. time for it. You, you can just barely hookshot it from the ground and... and didn't notice until way later. We got a green potion. That's gonna be handy. Um, it's very surprising we forgot, that. We, but we forgot the egg. Oh no. Yep. Not the egg. <laughs> and. Here we're using a bunch of twisted juice because we don't have bottle on B, but we also don't want to use two juice for each chest because that's yeah. kind of a waste. Um, so a twisted chew works where you like uh, do an ESS shuffle while holding a chew, and then you flick a direction while dropping it, and it just uh, it, like makes the chew go in the direction you are facing, but it's like facing the direction you twist it to. <laughs> So it has like a twist where it's going in one direction but facing another direction. So when it hits a wall, it like runs into itself or something and blows up. And you can do some weird stuff with that. You can also use that to send it like under doors or stuff like that. Oh yeah, so that that uh that entry into the magic fairy fountain was uh maybe hard to notice, but uh with a high speed you can actually clip through the wall you normally have to blow up in front of the fairy fountain. So just clip right in, save some time. Especially save that uh, that N64 lag time from a bomb. Yeah. Hey. yeah it, it turns out it's uh, slightly faster to actually just skip going through the, the lower part of Death Mountain Trail here and just like go out of bounds and climb it the fast way and then get the Skull Celeste and lower Death Mountain Trail later. Because we'll be back here anyway for, for Big Gorm Sword. Oh uh, yes, yeah, uh, side hopping up the path to the side there out of bounds is definitely humanly viable. It's not that hard. It's just that uh, the opportunities for it to come in to come up in RTA, it, it just uh, generally just doesn't come up that much. And it does. It's harder to save the full amount of time RTA, uh, but definitely viable.
Now we have magic, and and we're gonna straight away get even more magic. Because they're conveniently located right next to each other, the two fairy fountains. This is a little different from what RTA does. Yeah, in RTA, even though they're so close, we still don't get double magic until like halfway through the run. Uh, it's because you Might go be the, the other way. You go upwards. So you yeah, come we, from or unsteady and go out the top. So you'd have to go back in to get it. Yeah, exactly. While we are coming from the top and going down. Yeah, so coming, this this rerouting of um, this section, yeah, like you mentioned, Tass is a lot better at climbing the mountain. Other time save is like getting guild magic now. We will use... Uh, I, I think magic. we it skipped a sun song as well, right? Because yeah, we, 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 we can do everything in one cycle. Yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. RTA wouldn't be able to um, manage time yeah. of day properly without going as fast as the tests. And we also skip um, entering Goron City the normal way, so we won't see that um, intro cutscene that plays when you enter it the first time. There's a few times it's like that. And there's a hard piece right here in the, the mountain that is actually fast to get later, so we'll skip it for now. This is yeah, because actually that there's... Well, that, yeah, actually there's multiple reasons. Uh, but one reason is that Harpies actually will make, give us a full heart later on, so it'll, when we have to damage it down for some other things, it'll take longer. I think that was actually the thing that decided it, but... Yeah, it was, I think it was an extra hit on Dark Link too, right? Yeah. Oh, that's true. I think you're right, yeah. Oh yeah, and that, uh, so that Bolero cutscene skipped. So what happened there is if you grab a ledge with a high enough downwards velocity, Link will kind of do this like glitchy ledge grab. And if a cutscene activates during this glitchy ledge grab, Link will just fall through the floor. And so like the frame that the Bolero cutscene activated, Link just started falling through the floor. And then voiding out during the Bolero cutscene gives you the song, but you don't have to watch the full cutscene. Which is actually uh, a theme of most of the song cutscenes in this game is that they actually give you the song uh, most of the time at the very beginning of the song cutscene rather than in the middle. And so if you can find a way to trigger the cutscene and then uh, somehow interrupt it, then you can skip the whole thing. Also more RBA yeah. here. Do you want to talk about the RBA, Megu? Yeah, so yeah, we dropped on green potion with C, on C, right? So that puts an empty bottle in the trade item slots. Um, well, that'll be useful pretty soon, but here's another cutscene skip. Also got more chews with that RBA. So yeah, another, similar another chew refill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so this cutscene trigger is actually gigantic. It's it's impossible to miss. Oh, I, well. <laughs> well. Okay. If you you surely you must have been like extremely low when you hit the trigger or something to miss it. We had, we had to, well, I had to do an extra small step up before doing the hover because I was too low on the f in the f first try. Uh, okay, with the hover. if you if you're too so low, <laughs> you can miss it. But in terms of like pure uh, x x z distance, you'll 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 never miss it. Now while we are, it's still night time. We'll collect some some skulls here in in Source River. Use a bunch of chews. Octorox, shoot Mega Flip. That's great. Oh no, we died. Oh no. Tragedy. What will happen now? You might have guessed this is important because it allows us to actually make it into. Door's Domain, uh, before it turns day. We made this entire Death Mountain section and Zorger's section without any Sun Song, and it's still nighttime for the skulls that we need to get after this. Yeah, so, so here King Sora is frozen, and we want to talk to him. So we'll unfreeze him by talking to that sign. Now he's unfrozen, trust me. It's true. 
So this this happens because of uh, it's like some uh, loading quirk about King Zora where like if uh, he loads while the camera is panning while there's a text box on screen, it won't load the red ice properly, and then when you reload the area, there's just no red ice. Oh wait a second! What, what happened? That's there? not Sora Tunic. That's not a Sora Sora Tunic. Mm -hmm. What is that? Yeah, so there you so, can. Yeah. Can hold R to instead of getting Zora tunic, you can it'll give you the Avil Frog, and this is uh, this is the first first exclusive glitch. This one works on 1.0, 1.1, right? Um, I'm not sure about 1.1, but I, it definitely it works on 1.0. Yeah, it does work on 1.1. I can confirm. Okay, and there's another requirement for this, which is you need to have something in the adult trade item slot. So in we this have case, there, it was an empty bottle. <laughs> We had just a bottle there, which we got from RBA and Green Potion. Yeah, that's not that's... the only use of Green Potion, actually. And... That's... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that was the reason we could skip Egg. We kind of got Green Potion instead. Yeah, so the, the reason it works is something with like holding R gives you delays collecting the item, but Sora keeps running the get I or uh, give item thing until you actually receive an item and then for some reason it goes to the eyeball frog instead of the tunic when you delay it yeah that actually used to be huge for rta runs where for a very long time rta runs were best on 1.0 uh also because of that trick but eventually some of the things happened with rta runs that made bc faster but this run also uses some other 1.0 exclusive stuff to save back some time Mm -hmm. I have to go trade the frog, um, or maybe not yet. Oh, we'll have to hurry up because we're going the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, usually, uh, runs that get eyeball frog early will go directly to Lake Hylia, so you can quickly trade in the frog. If you want to make it to Lake Hylia? Oh, okay, that was a sick hook shot. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to go fast to uh, make it to Lake Hylia at this point. We still have two minutes. I think we'll we'll go get Serenade and then we can use Serenade to go to Lake Hylia. Oh, that makes sense. And then you'll have one second on the timer. That'll be very cool. I, I, yeah. I'm i sure you'll yeah. get to the lab in we'll, one second. Yeah. It, it's just like when you play Bolero to uh, deliver the eye drops, right? Yes, of course. And then the, the timer uh, that doesn't exist. <laughs> like, oh, 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 we should stop. <laughs> So yeah, we're actually stuff. doing dungeons now, so this is where it gets really cool, I think. Yeah, so. that was very cool gate skip there to skip uh, having to kill the Freezards by going out of bounds and walking around the out of bounds collision. And then Hess yeah, clipped through that. Yeah. Very nice. And an A slide to clip through the, uh, <laughs> the red eyes here to get the harpies. We so remember, we don't have hover boots yet. We also don't have bombs yet. Two things that RTA would have at this point. Well, maybe not with new rats actually, but typically. <laughs> yeah. So here we're damaging down a little bit as well. And then we skip collecting the, the silver rupees by just doing a little hover and a mega flip here. And then you can go past the gate. Very nice. And then a quick fight there. Yeah, so that that gate skip, um, that gate skip is actually not super precise. But the issue with uh, doing an RTA, why you might not see it in RTA runs, is it g generally the setup you would do takes longer than the time it would take to get the rupees. But in the task, you can do it super quick. And then that cutscene skip there, you can just open the chest, uh, the frame you die. And then uh, Link dies, the frame that Serenade cutscene starts. And then we have Serenade and Iron Boots. Trust us. Well, we're gonna equip Iron Boots right now. Okay, so this this weird movement here, uh, Link actually can walk down that slope faster than you can normally sink. So it's actually faster to walk there than try to just sink and then. Yeah, because Link will try to snap to the, the floor 
instead of when when you're floating down, you float down at a constant speed, but he will try yeah. to snap to the floor if you're walking. And then same with floating back up is also it's faster to try to walk up the wall and then uh, walk up the walls as much as you can and then float the rest of the way. And then here's something very cool. Enter Entering Jabu is only choose, so the loading zone for Jabu exists but not beneath the ice. And well, actually, I don't know the best way to explain that exactly how it works, but. Um, yeah, you just need uh, enough speed to clip into the ice while still being above the water and also having not downward speed, I think. I think it just needs to be not completely downwards. That has oh, yeah, the timer's that gone. The timer is gone. <laughs> that sucks. Dang. Yeah. I'll have, we'll have to get frog again, I guess. We died, so we lost our frog. That's unfortunate. Yeah, whenever you die um, with a trade item that expires, it goes back to the previous trade item that you're supposed to use. So in this case, the frog turned into prescription. So that's what we have now. So the only reason we got the frog was to actually get prescription. Kind of weird, but I'll come up later. Well, stuff in Ocarina of Time doesn't make sense, so it's it's fine. We got frogs, frog to get prescription. And then uh, the job was adult. This is um pretty standard now in RTA, but you know this is supposed to be done as child. So the adult saves a lot of time in a bunch of places having hook shot. Um, you can get those skulls without having to backtrack after getting a boomerang. What else? So that's mostly it. Climbing, climbing ledges also is just much mm -hmm. faster. You can climb much higher ledges. Yeah, as a general rule of thumb, if you can do something as both adult and child, it's generally better to do it as adult. Which uh, strongly applies to the child dungeons. Yeah, so, unfortunately, there's still no fast way to skip Ruto without SRM. So yeah, you sadly have to carry it around. There are technically ways to do it uh, that are not fast with some void warp shenanigans. To, like, That's why I specify and... fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But, uh, yeah, definitely not, not fast. So we're taking him damage here because uh, it's good to die once in a while. And then no play arounds. We we're all serious here. Serious business okay. only with Rudo. Then uh, I think this is the first instance of a super slide. Where you shield something in the same frame. Oh, During a roll you grab something and shield uh, damage and you'll go flying backwards. There's no skip there. Yeah, yeah super takes... slides. Uh, super slides have the same speed as a Hess or like max speed Z slide and A slide, but the reason they're generally not used as much is it's usually uh, they're usually more inconvenient to set up because of needing to grab something. Uh, but in that case, when you need to grab Rudo, it's actually very good. And more yeah, so there we we killed the yeah. last stingers with um with the, the chew. Got quick draw with that chew as well. Um, yeah, that. Actually, that setup actually depends on integer math. Um, <laughs> it's very precise. You can't just do it anywhere. It, you need to like mess with integer ma math to to have it actually hit your shield correctly. Um, now, normally, you need, need an adult. I don't need a wall behind him to, to actually your bottom will be like that. But then after that, we manipulated a fairy drop from the stingers because we had um, uh, one heart. And caught that on B, and with Posey right, and that gives 24 bomb shoes, and we just equip sword. So that's really nice because we didn't have to drop bugs, because that's a time loss. It's a really fast way to do RBA. The only downside is we have 24 shoes instead of uh, 29 shoes. Uh, that's, that's not a big deal. That was that's a super there. Thing. Also, as so someone asking what I meant by integer math, what I m meant is. Um, coordinate system in this game is, uh, well, float, uh, well, hex, technically, I think, but um, there's a lot of decimal places, 
when doing math for collision, it cuts off the decimals. So it only does integers. Uh, which means that the s some setups will not work depending on your position because of integer ma math. That uh, RBA setup being one of them. So shoutouts to uh, Bloopy Blah for making a percentage of Water Temple like years ago, which we used to get a few of these strats that we do here. And here you can uh, do an untagged side hop and then holy in 64. <laughs> that, I think that's one of the laggiest like single places on N64. Here's another uh, 1.0 glitch. Uh, quick put away with uh, or the glitch dump, uh, the um, what's it called? Quick put away without actually doing quick put away. Yeah, uh, yeah empty jump slash. Empty jump slash, yep. Yeah, and that, saw, uh, uh, when Link jump slash, he just didn't have anything in his hand. That yeah. makes the sword have lots of damage properties, and the one that matters here is the fire. So we could light those torches. That's one really nice thing. That was, that was one of the glitches I mentioned that was found in 2021, which made this route possible. If we didn't have that, then N64 would have to get some sort of bow in order to do Water Temple this early. And Water Temple is really nice to this early because long shot is super uh, useful. It saves time in a lot of places. Yeah, because yeah, uh, go going back to some um, version differences on, on VC, which most RTA runs do, you can pull out a Deku Stick as adult. But yeah. on N64, that would actually crash the game. So that's just not an option in this case, which is really good that uh, QPA is a good substitute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it turns out that uh, having a hookshot that's twice as long is just really good. So we kind of have to go here early, even if it means going without a bow. Vision fun glitch to get in here without hover boots, like hookshot, the hookshot target, and then Hover with the chew and then open the door. Barely make this chew as a hook shot. Or sorry, this, this skull. This is nice. Yeah, this room it has this room is a uh, waterfall. <laughs> yeah. That has up that is really cool. And another another nice precise mega flip and the back flip onto there. I was found pretty recently by Cadmic, so Managed to get it in here, though we had passed this point by uh, the time it was found. Yeah, we, we were way past this point, so we had to actually redo uh, the end of Water Temple here. And then Dark Link is also another reason why it's slightly nicer to walk Temple early, is because Dark Link's health actually depends on Link's health. So since we only have four hearts, Dark Link's a little bit faster. So here we do entrance point glitch in order to unload the um, song, uh, song of Time block. And get in here without Song of Time because we don't have that yet. This is the first weird shot. Mm, second one. Okay. We did one just before in uh, for the other skull behind oh, the yeah, gate. Oh yeah, for the other skull, for the cool skull behind the gate. So there are a few more weird shots coming up. Yeah, so weird shots basically just send your camera underground due to some weird animations. And then uh, we can just uh, hookshot from there. And uh, that hookshot right there, there's actually some uh, extra hookshot collision on the wall there. You can't see it, but it's just like some kind of leftover thing from development where there is what acts like hookshot targets on the wall. That one too. Uh, for some reason, and it's really good because that lets you weird shot in and out of that room very quickly. We did empty dump slash again for the glitch damage, so we can light this torch. Same idea as that previous one. So you could use sticks for that. Uh, we need to do uh, empty dump slash. Yeah. 
And then, yeah. Uh, We're running low on cheese again. Yeah, we, we need to do something about that again. After getting this uh, last Sculpture Lamar Temple, um, get this tech type to come close, kill it with a bomb chew, and have it also drop another fairy, and catch the fairy on B with empty bottle on C right. That puts a fairy in bottle 3, the third bottle slot. And then we equip Posey right and we can release the fairy. And this also does RBA because it kind of overwrites the empty bottle B. So that gave us 20 chews because that's the ID for empty bottle. So 20 chews is also not as many as you get with uh, RBA with bugs. But it also, that's a very fast way to do RBA since you don't have to drop bugs or anything. Because we need a fairy anyway. Yes, we also need so, a fairy for this so, so it's very, very convenient that we can just get 20 chews for, uh, in quotation marks, free. And then there's a really simple out of bounds there by just uh, shielding the chew near the wall. There's like some weird collision there that makes it very easy for just shielding that explosion to put you out of bounds and then directly into the loading zone for the boss. And yeah, then, the walls. The walls on Jabu are more like suggestions, you can also just like yeah. walk out of them. <laughs> yeah, Jabu walls are not great. Um, but yeah, and also, Trolley before that was also uh, using Equip Swap to equip Boomerang. So Boomerang is an item you can't normally equip as an adult, but with Equip Swap, you are able to equip an item regardless of age restrictions. And so that's what lets you uh, do Baronade as an adult. So it's impossible to stun Baronade without Boomerang. And then very quick fight. And then uh, right here we have to yeah, waste yeah. some time before Ruda. And then We're dying we died. again. And the fairy is here to revive us. So this is going to be the first um, wrong warp. Yeah, dying with fairy lets us get control on the blue warp, um, so we can walk around, and then we steal this pot. And then somewhere out of bounds right now, we're like clipping through a wall with the pot and hitting a load zone at the same time that the warp will take us away, and now we're in the Dungeon's Cabin. That must have been awful to test. Why? The camera? Or did you use free cam for like the whole... You see us free cam, it's not that bad. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess, I guess. But yeah, that's just uh, hitting the loading zone, which there you aren't normally supposed to be able to exit Baronade's room, but there is a loading zone behind the door you come in. And so you go out of bounds, you hit that loading zone at the same time the blue warp happens, and then you wrong warp here. Now we're fighting, um... We did not go with only choose. And one cool thing about wrong warping is, um, you can, if you pause, you can equip an item, and or you can equip an item that you nor can't normally use. If you equip it over a slot that you could, that previously had a usable item, you can then use it. So in this case, we equip Fours Wind, which you normally can't use in boss rooms. We just set Fours Wind right there. Yeah. And Fun fact about that Fours Wind: it's now set to the loading zone exiting the boss yeah. room in Jabu. Yeah, it, it doesn't yeah. actually set it to the uh, the proper load zone that it looks like you should that it should set it to after a wrong warp. Yeah, so if we press Pharaoh's one right now, we'll end back in Jabu, back in the weird loading zone in Jabu that like drops you out from high up and lands you on the floor. But uh, we can use that to wrong warp again, and this is actually going to be the exact same wrong warp. <laughs> yep, because because it's actually the exact same entrance because of that weird quirk with wrong warping, it, it acts exactly the same. So we uh, wrong up from Jabu Jabu to Dodongo's Cavern, and then from Dodongo's Cavern to Dodongo's Cavern. Yeah, and, and the the point of that is just a cutscene skip because uh, cutscene's pretty long. And then we have to actually unset Faroe's Wind and then reset it outside the door because if we don't, it'll still be in Jabu. <laughs> So we have to reset FW. 
So a uh, very fun uh, climbing section there. So uh, in Durango's Cavern, if you never uh, light the eyes, but you come out of the door that you're supposed to open only after you've lit, lit the eyes, you can actually climb up. Uh, it's like the bottom part of the jaw is invisible uh, if you haven't entered the dungeon normally yet. But you can climb it, uh, backflip up to the top of the head, climb all the way to the top. Uh, very, very fast way to get up to bombs, and then you can do the entire dungeon in reverse, which is really fast. I'm this a room big fan of. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the longest cabin in reverse. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, this room especially is good because in this room there's this skulltua that the normal intended way to get it is you have to go through the dungeon normally, uh, activate this one elevator, um, and then re go through the. A dungeon in reverse uh, after reloading the area so that the stairs are up instead of down because normally they would always be down after you go through that room normally. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter in this case because you have long shot but uh, yeah that way the staircase is just al already up for you. Now there's two more Skulltulas in this dungeon we'll get them much later. For now, much, we're heading much, to, much later. <laughs> yeah, heading to Fire Temple. Kind of just uh, doing a bunch of dungeons now. So we did get bombs there. That was the reason why we delayed bombs. It was because after doing that wrong warp to Dodongo's Cavern, it's a lot faster. Since we're it's less of a detour to get it after that wrong warp than to go there while you're earlier just while you're on Death Mountain. We still don't have hover boots. So here's ISG and playing a trade item can change the camera when you enter this room. So Darunia is not on camera and that skips talking to him. Well, it skips looking at him at least. Yeah, it skips the time you have to wait. Good, yeah, and then... we, are still, we are still talking to him. <laughs> yeah, right there, the uh, they turn the camera right as... Uh, Right as uh, Link jumped on the switch to activate the cutscene, but then the switch interrupted the cutscene, and that way just uh, gets rid of the cutscene entirely. We also had to actually manipulate the camera so that we're looking at towards the bus door when leaving, so that he has enough time to unload for the next time we we might be in the area. Yeah, if you don't unload him properly, then the cutscene will just attempt to trigger again. So that we used to twist a chew under the door if anyone catch caught it, and then. Uh, the chew is already dead when we want to hook it, which is a nice little time yeah, save. That was very nice. And the chew, the chew went under the door because its collision was fucked, uh, well messed up because of the uh, twi twisted chew shenanigans. Yeah, tw twisted chew again is like uh, if you ESS and try to shield drop a chew while flicking a different direction and then the chew is moving in a different direction it's facing which can cause it to be wonky with collision. And then since we don't have Gorn Tunic we have to take a little bit of a slower path here because we don't want to lose too much health. And we can't Hesse Cross either because it'll be interrupted by damage. And now the the counting has changed. It's no longer how many shoes have you, have we used. It's how many explosives have have we used. The bombs are a little bit um, slower to use than shoes because there isn't any good way of exploding them um, immediately. We'll actually do yeah. that later on, but it's uh, right now we don't have any way of doing it. Shoes so are. Generally better for Taz because we can explode them manually wherever we want, whenever we want. Um, bombs usually have a three and a half second timer. Um, for RCA, it's often the other way around because chews have a longer timer actually, so you'd rather have bombs most of the time. Yeah, for for chews, uh, like blowing them up whenever you want uh, in an RTA setting, usually only works if there's like a uh, an actor nearby that you can blow the chew up on, uh, but if there's not, then 
generally it's gonna be much harder to just like do it like a random twisted chew setup to blow up the chew or like a, a double bomb chew. <laughs> Very nice. So the user last to um flip through there um to skip uh this little, little part of fire temple. Get yeah, all the way to the top of the mids. Uh, that camera scene again is uh, if you mash camera, if you mash target as you're climbing up there, uh, the, the camera stays in place. And so passes like to do yeah. that to just uh, freeze the camera while climbing. Well, specifically for this, it's also a lot of lag reduction because this room oh, is true. laggy. <laughs> sure, I forgot about that. Yeah, and then a uh, very precise hook shot shot there to just barely, uh, long shot specifically is only the only way that works. Uh, barely grabs that ledge uh, without having to use Scarecrow Song to get up there. Yeah, getting Scarecrow Song is uh, not very high on the priority list for 100%. In fact, it's not even on there. Only it if is, it's required. It is not, for Scarecrow Song is not required. It is not an item. Just you only get it if it's uh, convenient for something. Yeah, RTA runs typically like to get it. It's generally good for RTA, but not this. And then we just backtrack after those last two skulls. This room is quite tight with uh, seven <laughs> seconds. Can you? Do you guys want to guess how many frames we have left when we open the door? <laughs> that was definitely one or two. <laughs> yeah, we have two frames left when we open that door. Nice. So, uh, was that planned? It's very when you, tight. When you entered that room, were you already sure that you could make it? Or was there a way? Uh, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd done it before where I knew seven seconds was enough. Okay. So, yeah. I wasn't that worried. <laughs> And some minor playing around. I'm not very good at uh, doing the play around stuff because I think it's, uh, while it is cool, it's also a lot of time investment for no gain. Because um, you're not getting any speed out of it. I, so I, think I haven't done good. I think it's good playing around. Something. <laughs> that one, I haven't done much of it. That one was good. Yeah, you like how we died and got the fairy at the same time? <laughs> Little uh, OOT 3D ISG attempt. Very convenient way to refill the health. And there's another two RBA. So we just dropped um, the bugs that were in Hammer Bottle. That RBA, which is good because we're about to get Hammer, and we want to actually use those bugs at some point. Hammer would overwrite that bottle we had. Then it's time for hammer. Pretty easy way to get hammer here. Pretty yeah. standard, I'd say. Yeah, very standard. Pass all the nice. way up, hook at the chest. So simple. I think RCA runs does that too now, right? Then quickly, uh, weird shot in this uh, last key. So there's one more um, gold shalot to get. Fire temple. Uh, we're gonna leave now. And of course, the boss as well. But we came here for Hammer. Hammer is a really useful item for this run. Because there will be a long time when we don't have a sword. And yeah, we need something uh, to use instead. Because if you remember from earlier, the stick does crash as adult on N64. Yep. So we need yeah. another weapon that is the stick. Yeah, that's actually another significant difference from RTA. Is RTA doesn't really do anything in Fire Temple until very late in the run. Because uh, it doesn't need hammer, but N64 definitely needs hammer earlier without being able to use sticks as a substitute for sword. So here we are sk skipping this uh, Poe cutscene by catching our bucks, which lets us move during the cutscene. Um, we actually can't insert straight away because if we actually went down there, the cutscene would play again when we get back up, so we're just leaving it for now. And. Uh, Letting the cutscene finish while we leave. 
Oh, also, a very minor thing which we got to point out in Fire Temple is uh, uh, when opening the hammer chest, the hammer chest opened pretty much instantly without the normal full animation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's actually because of having the bottle in the hammer slot from an earlier RDA. Uh, if you already have something in that slot, even if it's just a bottle, the game will treat it as like, oh, you already have this item, so let's play the faster chest opening animation, uh, which saves a little bit of time. RBA with um, hammer on C right puts a bottle in the Nero's Love item slot. That's Another twist of two. Yeah. And the Nero's Love slot can... is a. Uh, yeah, it's close. Cool. Kills us both. Kills first. So even though we didn't go down the elevator right away, we can the cut cutscene's still gone, so we can do it right here. We're we'll shot this skull again, or get another we'll shot here. And then uh, it's and then... marginally faster to void out than to ride it up. And there's a litchy ledge climb there again. Um, you can do that on on places where there's like. Um, well, Link climbs, and there's two pieces of collision overlapping. You can like try to climb one of them, and then hold a direction to go to the other one of them, and then he'll like pop up. It's like really weird. And here's a cool trick. Another entrance point glitch with bomb push and a hammer recoil inside the wall. And then use the a... same bombs yeah. to die. <laughs> Have it interrupt your hookshot, which gives you a hookshot jump. And then, uh, so the way this room works uh, with the Stalfos fight in here is uh, the Stalfos fight doesn't actually activate unless you enter the room above a certain Y coordinate. So you can't just enter the room from below and then hover up. That won't activate the fight. Um, but by doing this, you set your entrance point at a very high place uh, from the hookshot jump. And then voiding out there and reloading will uh, be enough to activate the stealthless fight. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, yeah. Love that. Oh. Leg. Juicy leg. Oh, M64, my beloved. And then uh, we actually have everything in Forest Temple now, so the only thing left is uh, Phantom Ganon. Um, the boss room is right below us right now, so uh, we'll just uh, make a flip out and jump slash into it. Yeah, luckily the collision there is uh, very easy to put through. So that was a, a twisted mega flip where we're like, um, we're facing a different direction than what direction the speed is pushing us. Um, which makes it so we can interrupt it with a jump slash in the middle of it to go forwards, which is a little faster than letting us fall all the way in with the correct angle and all that. Oh, the roll ESS. <laughs> we just have to wait here um, for the first phase. So here's some more twisted flips. And then unfortunately, Hammer is a little shorter than Sword, so we can't do the jump slash trap where we kill him before he even enters the arena. We have to wait for him to come down. And uh, he's only halfway through the ropes instead of <laughs> yeah. instead behind the ropes. Yeah. What a shame. The jump slash doesn't reach him. Very unfortunate. But yeah, uh, so, so what happens there is when you shoot a projectile at Phantom Ganon, he spins his staff, and during that time he's actually vulnerable. So if you can get him to spin his staff and then have ISG hit him really quickly, then he'll instantly get brought down and then from there you can uh, do ISG real quick, repeat the staff spinning thing uh, if he tries to get up and one cycle in really quickly. Then uh, we want to skip this cutscene as well, just like all the other ones. 
Um, so a lot we of damaging down. Yeah. We don't have ferry and we don't have FW, so we'll have to gain control another way. Uh, this will be by doing playing the Ocarina on the edge of the warp. This can be done with Ocarina items, so we'll be doing that. Then we get control, and then we'll die on the same frame as uh, the uh, warp is going to try to take us away. And uh, the white flash here means we got the forest medallion. Hey, yeah, don't forget this uh, first skull. We saved it till here because the loading zone back to Sacred Forest Meadow doesn't activate for some time. Um, so it's a little bit faster to get it then. Now it's time for uh first reason why this route is not really possible RTA. This is one of the tricks of all time. Yeah. Oh no. Um so if you watched uh, Low C, all dungeons in Low C, you know about this trick. However, that time it used hover boots. This time it does not have hover boots. So it needs to be from a backflip, which means we have less speed, which means the bug position is even more precise. How fun was that test? Oh, very, very fun. It was super enjoyable and I had a really good time doing it. Uh, how fun was it to test a second time? Not that bad, because you could just play back the same second. Uh, okay, actually. true, true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have to do it twice, because the first time you just skip Prelude, and the second time we actually ever want to get past. Yeah, and, and that uh, Prelude cutscene skip is... Um, Temple Time is separated into two different rooms. Uh, with the second, the back room getting loaded as you go through the hallway, and if you play Sun Song right as the back room loads, when the game uh, the game tries to load the uh, pretty little white cutscene right then, and then if you just play Sun Song right as that happens, you can skip the cutscene. Now it's not spliced; it's just the same input. It's it's one continuous macro. So here we're doing a bottle adventure. We went um, back in time with adult bottle on B. And that will mean when we go back to adult, adult's B will be changed to an item based on what child is on C right. And so we put long shot on child C right. And the idea of long shot corresponds to the Furore's win slot in the inventory. So since we have Furore's win in that slot, I put Furore's win on the adult B button. And Furore's win on B is really useful. We're going to set it right away. And this this Furore's win set is actually has multiple uses, and they'll get into that later on. And normally you can't set Frozen in Temple of Time, so that's the reason why I did that. Because um, with Frozen B, you can um, use Frozen anywhere where you can normally use Master Sword. Yeah. Not having Frozen restricted breaks the item a little. Well, actually, the item works exactly as expected, but it breaks the game a little because the game doesn't interact with the item in the intended ways when you put it in places where you're not supposed to. Now we're going to Deku Tree as adults. So, uh, right up here, at the Decatrice Mustache, you can clip in to the loading zone. So you can head all the way up uh, the root or what, whatever it is, and then uh, clip into the mustache and hit the loading zone. I feel like in Jabu, had, uh, adult here saves a lot of time, you can just hook her all the way up. You can use Hammer to wake up this scrub a little bit faster than reflecting a nut. Slingshot. Which, uh, yeah, we actually need to get before we go child again. 
Yeah, that's true. Whenever you get Slingshot, it, it sets your capacity to 30. Um, so if you got any upgrades beforehand, then... And you can't get those upgrades at all, because... Um, well, yeah. Can't erase the upgrades. So now we're hitching our back up to the upper level to get um, this skull here. We also did a uh, empty jump slash for glitch damage again on the slingshot chest. Yeah, we need to light this torch. Yeah, yeah, because again, we don't have sticks. Um, we do actually have bow now, don't we? Yeah, you could use bow, but yeah. then that'd be an extra pause. Yep, the original idea was to use bow here, but then, but then I realized that much time. Use... again. And then uh, collect some some skulls and Hope shot stuff, all and then place. yeah, and then we get finally our first get a stick. Uh, finally, stick. an hour and twenty five minutes in, finally got Deku stick. And here's a <laughs> way to skip the skull space. You might have seen this with hover boots, but it's possible without. And then we still have yeah, uh, I've, 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 I think literally like two days ago, Safe State posted that trick without hover boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some, yeah there, I believe you find a method for this a while ago. Yeah, that's what we used here. But there's some more upsets. And now we can do a super slide teleport for 2 3 1 skip. We get straight into the boss room. Nice. Yeah, uh, so that's super slide teleport. Uh, when you try to grab uh, a piece of grass like that and you don't have strength, uh, Link can't actually pick it up. And if you do a super slide off it, when Link tries to attempt to pick it up, he'll actually get teleported back to that place. And then by having ISG and going down a slope, um, going down a slope means he'll be put out of bounds below it, and then having ISG means he'll be staying in the air without falling, and then you can do that mega flip directly to the boss. The very hard boss fight. Yeah, no, that, one, that one was really hard to test, actually. Really, really, really hard to time the, the crouch steps correctly. We're going to do another wrong warp with Furore's Wind. And so when losing Furore's Wind here, it'll um, load, try to load um, the cutscene and also the last place where you set Furore's Wind. So based on the entrance table where you set Furore's Wind in Temple of Time, it ends up taking us to this cutscene, which normally plays after you've beaten both um, Shadow and Spirit Temples. And it ends up putting us uh, on the Requiem Warp Pad. So that's kind of like the default. It could either send you to you either go to the Shadow Warpad or um, Spirit, depending on which one you did last, but somehow the default one is Spirit, which is really nice because getting to Spirit, Spirit's really out of the way compared to everything else in the game. And so having a wrong warp to get here is um, very convenient. In other um, routes, you've probably have seen wrong warping to the Silver Gauntlets cutscene, one that plays after getting Silver Gauntlets. The problem with that is just it's a long cutscene, and so it's nice to just have a shorter uh, warp to get here. Yeah, plus also different, uh, it requires different uh, Furore's Wind positioning. So this one was yep. done with Furore's Wind set in Temple of Time. Uh, the one to Silver Gauntlets is Furore's Wind set in Lost Woods. Yeah, and the Furore's Wind point is actually still there after doing a wrong warp, and that'll be very useful still. To avoid... Uh... Skipping the door with more bugs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm gonna do that again. No, Silver Gauntlets are not necessary. Uh, the, the wrong warp that goes to the Silver Gauntlets to cutscene doesn't actually get the Silver Gauntlets. It's just a method of a wrong warp to that to that place. But uh, again, for, um, for the category rules when it comes to upgrades, you only need the highest upgrade. So you need, uh, so only gold gauntlets are required. And we don't really want to do that much in spirit right now, because, well, we can't do that much in spirit from down here. It's, it's faster to go from the top down. We're going to want to have a bit before doing more. Uh, we will get a little, uh, one yeah. skull and one key here. Yeah, we'll... We'll go in this way and then we'll warp away instead of going back out.
And there's uh, probably a way to overlap this uh, skeleton token with the door cutscene, but I couldn't find a good way to make it fast. So... Possible probably improvement there, I guess. Hmm? That's just a possible improvement. Yeah. Add it, add it to the list. <laughs> Now we play um, the Suns tonight in order for this sculpture to spawn. And then we play Suns today in order to get the sun to come up. Yeah, hook, jump, jump. So we need uh, we need fire arrows, and the fastest way to get that is uh, the hook, jump, jump, and. This hookshot jump is done by interrupting the hookshot by collecting the skull token, which we left at the top of the tree. And then we activated it and we go flying really high. Yeah, this is everyone's everyone's favorite trick. The big and jump. Here, here bombs us aren't as bad because we have a lot of time where we are falling where we can, can put it down so it explodes when we need it. And then when you mega flip into water, you can carry the speed out of the water to a uh, Hess. And then we go straight into the lab. Um, unfortunately, um, we don't have gold scale. So we have to do this. And even more unfortunately, we have to wait for this textbooks. Because we saved warp since last time we were underwater. Uh -huh. So by hookshotting that, right, and then putting on Kakiri boots, it triggers the um, whatever thing to get, uh, the, the harpies from touching the bottom of the lab. And also, a very minor interesting thing, uh, in this room, you don't get slowed down as much when you have iron boots on, yeah. so that's, uh, partially why they equipped iron boots much earlier. And, in fact, there's no difference between iron boots and normal boots in houses. Yeah, yeah I couldn't re remember if it was, like, a less difference or no difference at all, but yeah. Since you don't have a scarecrow song, you can do a little hover onto this house instead. You can There's another possible shoe in that hover. Yeah, so, uh, you can. Minor time uh, save there, possibly save another shoe. <laughs> and then RNG manipulate, make sure that the Gwei doesn't actually knock you down, like he always does. It comes and then dangerous. Really shows. nice. I saw that Mega shadow flip. like directly below you. <laughs> yeah, and that's a nice uh, ground flip, as, as Miku said. Straight into the towards the main. So now here we're finally going to use prescription again, or to get uh, Og the normal way. Uh, instead Wait a we second, pulled that's our, not which frog. <laughs> pushes it back to Zoro Tunic. Now finally we're going to get frog. And now uh, we can use Froze Wind, go back to Temple of Time, and then pull Master Sword, and then mash B to keep this text box on screen. So and, the timer doesn't expire. And how fast do you have to mash B there? Once every frame. <laughs> so, 20 yes. times a second. So that is not humanly possible. Um, and then the timer's frozen. It's simple yep. as. This is a glitch that... Um, a specific pickle method for freezing the timer was a thing that I felt like this really made this route work out so well. At first, when you said at um, the Master Sword, Useful for the wrong warp to spirit. It was useful for skipping door of time. You have to do door of time skip again. It also allowed this really fast way of freezing the timer. And freezing the timer is something that'll be useful later. And there are a few ways to do it. Usually, you wait for the timer to um, expire. Just wait and then void out uh, while it expires. And that's kind of slow because you have to wait for it to go all the way down. Maybe you could out in some stuff during that time, but it's Usually awkward to do that. Another way is to play a warp song or use Forest Wind like we did in this case, which immediately sets the timer to one second. And then if you can find a way to void out in that one second, that'll freeze the timer. Um, but those methods are also a little bit slower. But it turns out that this 
method with uh, using frozen on B uh, at the Master Sword is just really fast. It's actually really like, no time loss because it's what we're going to do anyway. So it's extremely convenient. For this, uh, the idea was to play Serenade, and there's actually a way to um, clip and void out within that one second um, and free the timer from uh, right after playing Serenade. But this is like something like 20 seconds faster. It's really not, actually not a huge time save, but it just fits so well with the route. Oh, yeah, so, Another uh, thing about... Yeah. Uh, go ahead. So with this frozen timer, uh, some text boxes are going will have the potential to unfreeze it, and we want to avoid that. And uh, so normally this would really limit you on like what you can do while you have a frozen timer. But actually, the, the timer only gets unfrozen if you keep the text box on screen, or at least one frame. So. If we just get uh, every text box is frame perfect, then we can keep the um, uh, time of there on screen. I'll beat later on. Yeah, so uh, some people were asking about um, how you can mash uh, B every frame if uh, and why that wouldn't count as just holding, holding the B button. So the game actually uh, pulls inputs at 60 times a second, but each frame repeats three times, so it, it is effectively 20 times per second. But um, if you if it is pressed for an input frame and then released, and then the next uh, visual frame comes up and then pressed and released, uh, it will still count as being mashed every frame, even though it registers as an input on every frame. So it's just some uh, input weird input shenanigans, weird weird way how the game handles inputs. It's incredible it even works in the first place. And that's another reason why this route can't be done RTA. Need some other method of, unfree of, free of freezing the timer. We're getting Sorry Song here. We're going to need it for uh, a couple glitches coming up. Yeah, Sorry Song, interestingly enough, for a long time was never a useful song at all, but actually. Uh, Glitchwise has a few interesting applications. Uh, thanks to its unique text boxes, they can pull up anywhere. Yeah. So, so even if RCA could actually like freeze the timer like that, it would be still very hard to follow this route because of. The fact that the timer can unfreeze at many NPCs coming up that we're talking to. Yeah, th there have been uh, at a specific time. there have been RTA routes in the past that propose like some frozen timer type route um, where you would have to like get make sure you get these frame perfect text smashes on these certain NPCs or else your entire run is over. And yeah, I've, that, I've, that wasn't I've... great. I think basically every single NPC we talk to until we unfreeze it, we have to do frame perfect on. Nice. I think I think some of the the proposed older routes only have to do like one or two of them, but that's nice. Yeah, there's a couple ones that are particularly nice to put during the timer. But since it's a task, we can just do as many as we want. And just press the button correctly. Uh, earlier we um, went into Goron City and then left using a clip to leave. And that was so that when we void out here, we don't get put back onto the Bolero pad and we can just go right into Goron City. Um, you might see RTA go into Double Magic instead, but since he already got Double Magic, it's better to use Goron City for this purpose. Nice test there too. Um, with the torches. So we actually have some time to waste here. Um, before we can actually hit the Gorn running up top, so we can use that time to get an extra stick. I don't think we actually use that extra stick, but uh, we have the time. It was to like waste. one week when I when I said, "Oh, pancake, we need we need another stick. You got to get it." And then I said, "Oh no, actually we don't need the stick." And the next day I was like, "Oh, actually we do need the stick." <laughs> so um, we got a stick. Doesn't waste any time. So 
No problem. Now we get the the bum back, the, the medium bum back. Which uh, allows us to like the game even more. <laughs> Says they're great to the golden maze. No, we are not still mashing B. It was only during the transition when going back to child when that text box was on screen. Yeah, just the initial time it needed to be frozen. Here we are being over green potion again to uh, get rid of our. Trade item. I actually forget what it is we have for it now. Is it? It's still a frog. So we got rid of frog again. So now we just have yep. to. Yeah. So yeah. So money. now. Yeah. So when the trade I when the trade timer expires, uh, since we had frog in the inventory, it would send you back to Zora's domain where you get the frog. That's what's supposed to happen. But if you have something else in that slot, then instead it will just reload the current area you you are in, and that's what we want to happen eventually. So what we did there was RBA with the green potion to put the bottle um, over the frog in inventory. So now when the timer expires, it'll reload the current area. We could have alternatively just uh, duped over frog with a bottle dupe. Um, but it's more convenient to do it uh, this way because we can combine it with uh, getting one of the soil skulls. And you can't dupe over um, the at adult trade, uh, trade slot as child at a soil patch like that. So that's the other use of uh, green potion. And if it weren't for this, it would be faster to just get egg normally, instead of doing this whole thing with RB and green potion. Uh, the fact that you can also skip duping over frog as adults uh, makes it faster to use green potion instead. Now we're just we climb this all ladder the, for this, yeah. All the there's one other back. place where there's potential time save of skipping climbing this ladder. Yeah, there's some hover with ISD and boomeranging the chew, uh, boomeranging the token during the hover, but yeah, we don't currently have anything equipped, so it's like, no, nothing equipped that can give us ISD, so it's, yeah. I also, so the reason uh, for giving the letter to the guard is that that's the trigger for opening the happy mask shop. And that's needed for later. So here we get every war except for the choose. You might think that shoes are so useful we should get them, but it actually takes like six seconds to get the reward. <laughs> and it's not and worth it. it. And it doesn't matter at all anyway, because we yeah. are BA in graveyard. <laughs> so in fact, if we got them, they'd just be be uh, removed anyway, or overwritten. We got a Stone of Agony, and it has a use because we're on 64. Dampe is pretty slow. Can do yeah, this before actually talking to Dampe. <laughs> We can do a lot of stuff before even Dampa even gets close. So we're getting skulls and heart pieces and killing the other skull and then we'll talk to Dampa. Oh, wow! God, it's first try. Oh my God. That's crazy! First try! How, we, how many, how we many might... actual... how many save state tries did it take? Uh, I have no uh, it, data it, on that point. Was it fast or slow? It was a while. Alright, nice. Because it, it also has to be fast. <laughs> it's going I, can't direction. I can't just uh, wait a frame and, and try again the frame yeah. after and... So. 
I got time for really Kali stuff. Still have the timer there. Wait, the timer's at one second now. It's been for a while, but yeah, when you play a warp song, it goes from zero to one. Yeah, because playing a playing a warp song sets the timer to one because it's meant to set the timer to one and then it ticks down and it expires and sends you back. Um but because the timer's frozen it just sets it to one and then it doesn't tick down. And then we do a little bit of fishing. By holding target in the water and then talking to the the fish f f fish pond guy, <laughs> the 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 owner of the fish the pond guy, or yeah, fish whatever. Um, then then you you get gold scale and then uh, you just show him a bigger fish afterwards and then you also get the heart piece. Yeah, that's, that allows you to do fishing in just one trip instead of doing adult and child fishing. And that's another thing that would unfreeze the timer. If you, there's a, at least one frame per text box in there that's necessary. Probably a few. Yeah, I, I didn't count the frame perfect text yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah, doesn't matter really. <laughs> yeah, here's Rudo's letter, which is also a required item. Because it is a, it is a bottle <laughs> that we need to get. Nice, nice setup for a super swim there. Yeah, here we go from, from 18 to 29 choose, so we kind of had a lot of choose before in this RBA, but um, it worked out this way. We do need to do this RBA. Yeah, some places we have a lot of uh, choose to waste, and other places we have no none left over. It kind of just works out like that. Also there, you collected uh, both uh, sculpture tokens at the same time. Which makes there be only one text box, which is kind of nice. Here, we'll hover over this fence instead of climbing the ladder. Yeah. It's only one hover, so it's uh, a lot faster than climbing the ladder. Oh yeah, that scrub text box will also unfreeze the timer if you don't do a frame perfectly. Yeah, and now we are. Uh... Heading off to Gerudo Valley. Because Gerudo Valley has some skulls as, ch as child that we need to get, and. Yeah, I know, this is the closest we'll ever be to Gerudo Valley. So it's unfortunate that the Hess is a bit long to get there. Yeah, so. We actually have to uh, enter Gerudo Valley for this, um, for a very particular reason. Coming up after this. It's, we have to route him. The child uh, overworld stuff like this going to Gurudev Valley um, on the Kalia. Yeah, so that scroll to that, that is not actually on the wall. It's floating away from the wall. So you have to time the chew so it blows up on its own when getting to the skull. Um, it won't blow up on impact because there is no impact because the skull isn't on the wall. So, uh, it looks slow, but I, uh, there's just not much you can do about it. I don't know if there's a reason why it's not on the wall, or if the developers just misplaced it, or something. Yeah, it's probably just a misplaced. There's, there's a lot of actors in this game that are just slightly misplaced. Like the door time. Yeah. And uh, we just uh, clip out here and void out to get back to the top real quick. And uh, we leave through this entrance, which is uh, important, coming up. But before that, we'll just uh, get this uh, scroll in yeah, here so with uh, QPA. So this method of using a nut to get quick, quick put away is also 1.0 exclusive. 
um, 1.2, you'd usually uh, get damaged while you, while you put away the stick. And I'm collecting the tokens as early as possible while still uh, yeah. actually having them collect. Um, because you can actually collect them too early, so they do. Uh, that's so not here's, allowed. Here's the text transfer glitch. To sell um, Bunny Hood without having it. Yeah, just did so... a glitch called Speak A twice. Yeah, double um, Speak A. <laughs> yep. There's a lot that just went on. Basically, uh, we can use the Sorry Song text box to instead activate the Runner Guys text box, which um, happens when you sell Bunny Hood. Yeah, so that and skips the... the entire mass trade quest. Don't need to sell all the other masks. And the beautiful and Tektite is... Super Swim. Yeah, so this is one glitch which uh, is 1.0 exclusive as well, the way we did it. There is a method now in 1.2. Um, it's still slower. And now, right here, on the trigger for the Zelda Skip cutscene, we'll instead play Saria's Song. And one of the text boxes in Saria's Song can unfreeze the timer. That one so right there. So we have there. the timer unfreeze. <laughs> The same time as the uh, cutscene happens, and this causes a wrong warp to the Nocturne cutscene. I think that's the uh, may, maybe the first time in the entire run you you saw the little triangle at the bottom of a text box. Yeah, exactly. That's the one that unfreezes it. Um, yeah, and the reason so specifically the timer, like I mentioned before, uh, when it when it um, unfreezes, it'll reload at you at your last entrance, and in that case, it was. Hyrule Field from Gruta Valley. Uh, those grottos we enter don't actually update your last entrance in the same way. And so, put the cutscene uh, value from the Zelda Skip cutscene, put us into the uh, Nocturne cutscene. And this is really nice because it skips, first of all, it skips the Zelda Skip cutscene, which is around two minutes. So now the ocarina is in the water. And it skips the first part of the Nocturne cutscene. So that's another minute and 20 seconds, I think. And it also means that uh, normally to activate the Nocturne cutscene, you need uh, the forest, fire, and water medallions, or at least you need to beat all those temples. Uh, we want to beat uh, Fire Temple at the end. So we need to have some way of getting Nocturne for that. This is the way that uh, works for this route. Okay, so we're going to do this chance switch again. So a similar idea here. Um, using the dense fire, using a dense fire cancel, which involves uh, a quick spin and then setting dense fire, which and then getting hit right after that. And you can talk to the NPC and throw nuts to get the glitch called Speak A. And then walk away. Um, and pull bean. I honestly I don't know exactly why that's required, but <laughs> then after pl it's playing Sorry's song, I think the pull bean was just to call the actor, but uh, I'm Something not like sure. That. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into that glitch. But yeah, that glitch uh, gave us um, the Broken Goron Sword, which is the item that that carpenter normally gives you during the trade quest. So we still have to actually finish the trade quest at some point. We got frog twice, but then lost it both times. <laughs> so, and we we really shouldn't get a frog as a pet. We'd lose it so fast. <laughs> yes, yeah, Ocarina time. time is... Yeah, <laughs> now we're getting Ocarina enough time. Wait, well, what's what's the gambler set? What do people think? Oh yeah, uh, let me check. Let's see. Forty-two percent for three ten to three twenty. Yeah, that's the it's most popular the option. Uh, not many people think it'll be three thirty to three forty. So people are pretty I don't know confident why. you'll have you'll be more than ten minutes faster than the test or than RTA. Yeah. Uh, so twenty-five percent of people that have faith. <laughs> the believers in sub three. Let's see if it pays off.
Now we'll head off to to Lotto Ranch to to do the stuff we we need to do there as child, which is uh, talent bottle, a couple of skulls of us, a bonus song, a heart piece. Oh, the usual stuff. But there's going to be something interesting that I don't think has been around for. for, for for a while, where this is the last bottle we get, um, so there's no uh, animation for it. Because we actually already have four bottles. So it's just going to make the sound, and we aren't going to hold it over the head or anything. It's just going to put it in bottles at one, and there'll be no sound for it. Well, there'll be a sound for it, but, but there'll be no animation for it. So it looks a little weird, but I promise you we are getting a bottle here. But yeah, it looks like we aren't, but, but I promise you we got it. Yeah, so we no longer have that green potion, but we don't need it anymore. So, works out. Step two still possible? I don't know yeah. about that one. <laughs> A few minutes. Two minutes to get like, what is it, eight hearts? Eight hearts, several dungeons, a lot of stuff. I think we're only halfway done with skulls or something. Ah, we must be more than halfway because we did the uh, CAC school half. The heart piece, yeah. Okay, uh, here's uh, a glitch known as 000, where the game just stores unloaded access at coordinate zero zero zero, and then uh, hit that with a ch chew to blow up those axes. Yeah, that's where that uh, seemingly random bomb chew explosion was. Yeah, so that skull up there, already dead. It got hit by the, the glitch. Um, this skull on the, on the wall here, also already dead, but that's because we fired another chew. We collected both of them at once there, so it looks like we only collected one. And then this chew is also already dead, or this skull is also already dead. Then we collect that while walking into the Being the able house. to control that Hess and take it all the way to the end without ever stopping during the boomerang throwing was really cool. And right here we can I just like roll out of bounds and uh, jump flash to get the heart piece. Now we need to 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 get a couple of things in, in market. Um, we need the, the upgrade bum bag, hard piece from Bum Chew Gaming, and then we need the we actually need to collect the masks as well because we don't actually have a mask in the inventory right now. We are required to get the mask of truth at least once, and also have a mask in our inventory at the end of the the run. So we'll have to go and and collect that. Oh, this, this is uh, second wall was... skip. Yeah, so just get it. There's a really there. precise position where you can send the chew through the middle wall into the back. Save some time. Oh, M64 <laughs> lag. That was awesome. Love that. Love that lag. <laughs> Now I want to time how much slower Bomchi Bowling alone is from lag <laughs> compared to VC. So we need an uh, extra cycle of Bomchi Bowling between those two when we actually get the rewards because the rewards go on a fixed cycle. The best you can possibly get is one between your Harpies and Bomb Bag. But here we're going to clip out of bounds so that we can enter the mask shop at night. 
I don't know why you need to play. The... <laughs> the so that, game. that that out of bounds movement is actually uh, surprisingly precise because there's like this. Is it an invisible wall or is it just the loading zone you have to jump around? Um. Uh, so so there's walls all the way along um, the side where the like the houses look like they have collision. Um, so you have to get around that. And to get around that, you have to like side hop and jump slash out of bounds because if if you just try to get around it normally, you will hit the loading zone. Yeah, so so you can't just normally walk around it. You got to do a tight jump, which is very cool, especially if you want to do it without free cam, which I'm sure free cam was used for that. What oh, no, we got Goron yeah. mask. Yeah, we got Goron mask. mask, and we still have um, Mask of Truth equipped on C using a quip swap. Um, so we're gonna need Goron Mask later, but we also need Mask of Truth for the Nut Upgrade. Goron Mask for, for I, Goron Roll. <laughs> I like equipping Goron Mask every single loading zone. I, I like the, uh, making sure that it's always used. Well, it's for the Goron Roll. Every time we roll now, yeah. it's faster. Yeah, Goron Roll, of <laughs> course. Oh, no blend of truth. Risky play. <laughs> I didn't get my, my lens and rando logic yet, so I have to, to guess here. Oh, going for all up. It's, it's a risky play, but it, it always pays out for me. Oh man. Nice. Did you actually manipulate it specifically for all up, or did you just happen to get that? I did. I I did get all up uh, manipulated because it was like I had three in a row, and then I was like, okay, well now I have to manipulate the last two. <laughs> nice. It's not faster or slower one way or the other, right? No, it's the same distance to the chest. Um, the only thing that would make it faster or slower is is how you enter the door. Uh, if you're inserting it further to the right or further to the left. And I don't even think then it's more than a frame. So. Oh no, we're out of choose again. We need to do um, use the water to get quick draw for RBA this time. And then we already choose again. And since we don't have Mask of Truth in the inventory, we have to keep it on equipped um, for this section here. So we can only have uh, two C button slots. Ah, uh, yeah, because yeah, we can't let it go, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, safe state. Uh, we're doing frame perfect resets. Like the. the I, th frame, I think it might just be the way that it looks in GZ. Like the frame we're saving on is also the same frame we're resetting on. It maybe just looks weird in GC. Yeah, that's probably it. Here we want to um, get the max stick capacity using only um, the scrub and not the skull kit upgrade. So we just did a hover over the loading zone and into this room, and now there's two uh, deck of scrubs loaded. We can talk to both of them and Thank get you two stick sellers sticks. Very convenient. So most uh, runs will actually use egg RBA, RBA in the pocket egg, which we skipped to get a glitch step stick upgrade. That will make it so you only need to get one of those. That lag um, during Sun Song. That was incredible lag. N64 is incredible. <laughs> Truly finds lag in places I didn't know had it. Surely you manipulated some cool songs, right? No. <laughs> 
good. <laughs> Get this over with as soon as possible. <laughs> this minigame sucks. It's the first time. I'll explain more about that thing with the stick upgrade. So, like I said, most runs will um, RBA the pocket egg to get a stick upgrade, and then that means you only need to get one stick upgrade after that. Um, and that was the original idea. You're really going to get sticked like normal and do that, and not need green potion like we used. But since we get a stick later, we got stick remember in Deku Tree in Dolt 2. And the reason for that was we need to have zero sticks at the end of Adult 1 in order to dupe over them uh, in Temple of Time. But if you have any sticks, then you can't dupe over them. I'm away. And so that's why we need to play stick. But the problem with that is that whenever you get stick for the first time, it sets your capacity to 10. It gives you the normal like starting stick capacity. So if you RBA egg, and then get your first stick, go back to the original starting stick capacity. So that RBA stick upgrade is useless. That's why even if we did RBA egg, we would need to do that dupe uh, to get both stick upgrades there. So it ended up being, that's one of, one of the reason why getting egg didn't end up being worth it. It's actually a lot of things that went into <laughs> skipping egg actually being faster. Almost over. We're almost there. It's over, it's finally over. We get to play the game again. We need another upgrade dupe, actually. You skipped the uh, bullet bag upgrade and mark it. So we're gonna get this one twice. But how are we gonna get it twice? During that cutscene, we're actually on the ladder, which allows us to have one frame where we can pull a chew to the leg grabbing the item. And then we load the other room, which unknows this guy while he's giving us the item, which allows us to do it again. Because his flag doesn't get set for saying he's given us it. And this time we don't care, because this time we actually want it. This especially saves time because remember it was nighttime when we were in market before, so entering um, the archer game at night is slightly slower. So a little more time than usual. And here we have to get the the not upgrade. Yeah, this is the reason why we had Mask of Truth equipped the entire time. By pulling a shoe, you can delay getting the knuckle upgrade until you're inside the loading zone. So you skip the animation for getting the upgrade, but you still get it. You'll see that we have 40 knots next time we pause. Well, if you pay attention, you'll see that. <laughs> Right there, 40 knots. Missed it. We don't, we don't have much left to get as child. There's stuff in Zora's River, um, and there's stuff in Zora's Domain and Fountain, and there's also um, the gold, the uh, soil sculpture in Nether Colossus, and that's it. 
Yeah. So, so Charles almost finished entirely. Though, uh, the frogs take a while. Okay. Especially on N64. <laughs> they really put all the pity Ocarina minigames as, as child. And then we decided to put them right after each other. That's just that's just how it's optimal. It's, it's been like that even in RTA for too long. Yeah, yeah. Optimal to be bored for ten minutes straight. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah, the the frogs can't quite keep up with how we're playing the songs because they have a, quite a lengthy animation for their notes. Um, We've basically finished playing the song when the first frog lands again from, from its animation. So it looks a little funny. Alright, and the frogs are finally over. Now we can actually get to play the game again. After more Sunsung lag. Well, from from this Sunsung, we're actually on a timer now, all the way until... Yeah. A long time from now. <laughs> yeah. We had to play Sunsung right away. After frogs. And we actually, this is on this little movement here, going back up Zorja isn't really seen in RTA because um, usually we take the warp to go to Zorja's domain from the Kalia, but we didn't do that because we left the Hyrule Fields instead. So here's another quick put away, but not method. Light these torches. Yeah, quick, quick put away gets a lot of use in, in this run. Turns out the uh, 1.0 quick put away is quite strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normally in RTA you use Din's Fire here, which... Uh, you already have Din's Fire here, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, right. we could have used it, but... Yeah, but it just would have been slower. And you, we do a little weird slide past uh, King Sora. Here's a funny little thing, it's actually faster to boomerang this token because it allows you to play Ocarina sooner. Nice. Because the really the, the end of token lag uh, kind of gets cancelled because you can pull the Ocarina the same frame the boomerang returns to you. And there's usually like, I don't know, maybe it's like 10 frames of lag after collecting a, uh, a token, but you can overwrite that with pulling the Ocarina. But only on boomerang. Here's the last uh, child item. And also combining this with another Poe RBA for refilling shoes. Yep. And the we really wanted to to end with something that would RBA choose because the next adult section coming up is going to be pretty long, and we'll have 
other or how far is going to be again. And that means we can't get more cheers with RBA because that would overwrite the frozen RB if we put bottle on B. So it was really important that we had um, a lot of cheers going to the adult section. And yeah, so Goron Mask. We're equipping Goron Mask on C, right? That's for BA again, or Bottle Adventure. So Goron we Mask. We didn't have Bottle on B. Yeah. So when we, we went, when we went back to Child before, we had frozen on B. So we just keep frozen on B. It's simple, right? Um, bottle Adventure only activates when you have a bottle or a trade item on B. In that case, Forest Wind just stays Forest Wind. So that's another really nice thing with um, my reset Forest Wind uh, Master Sword. Not only was it just saving time from uh, doing Dot Step again, but we could also just start the build 3 with Forest Wind on B. And now, finally, we're going to Shadow Temple by uh, skipping the Dodge Zone by having the bombs push us. Um, RCA runs usually go to Shadow Temple really early because Hover Boots is quite a strong item, but Taz doesn't really care about Hover Boots. Yeah, and so, uh, so that bomb push to skip the load trigger, so uh, bombs have a little bit of collision and they can actually push you, and if you stack uh, multiple bombs in the same place, their push gets added together. And so uh, with three bombs all placed in the same, same place, and then a decently high enough speed, in that case uh, a backflip or a side hop is enough, it um, allows you to, it pushes you so far that it goes through the load trigger uh, down the stairs, and so it just doesn't load uh, the door. Yeah, and it was actually in that room before this fight, we lost a little bit of time to having an extra one of those pop-ups. Um, you can you can have one less by doing a super slide instead. Um, and also, the dead hand fight is a little slower than usual, because hammer is stupid for this fight. Um, normal hammer slash, that usually does two damage, doesn't hit dead hand, so you can't do the... 4 plus 2, and then that jump slash strat. Um, so we have to do 4 plus 4 plus, plus 2 to jump slashes, which is really annoying. And then, Man, uh, very cool bossy skip there. So uh, that was um, similar with the uh, bomb push. Uh, the bomb push um, plus a high speed with the super slide plus the slope in the corner there uh, gives you enough push to clip out, out of the room and then fall directly into the loading zone for the boss, which happens to be right below there. And then the bongo fight. Yeah, the bongo fight is quite funny. Possible funny. Fight. So, so um, um, dropping the bomb into the fight uh, can stun bongo before the fight starts and skip that cutscene. Uh, but that only works on version 1.0 and 1.1, so that's another uh, version advantage for this run. And then the reason the bongo fight took so long is uh, the only, so again, like Pancake said, um, like just with dead hand, uh, regular hammer swing doesn't uh, actually damage um, bongo, but at, uh, no, uh, a default power crouch stab does damage bongo, and default power crouch stab is the only current. Um, weapon damage they can use to attack Bongo. The problem is it only does one damage, but that's literally the only option for killing Bongo right now. Yeah, so it's, it, I have to stab him a couple of times instead of just uh, twice. Yeah, normally oh. if you have if you have Master Sword, it's like uh, five hits? No, nine hits? With Big Orn, it's like five? Yeah, I don't know. We didn't have it, so I don't care. <laughs> But yeah, um, now we just uh, have to go through Shadow um, to actually collect the items inside Shadow. But we kind of just skip the whole temple to go to Bongo. Um, and now that we have um, a bow as well as bombs, we can actually blow the bombs up a little faster. So they're not quite as bad as they were before. They're still worse than shoes, but uh, they have some uses now. Um, and they, they need to have some uses because... We can't RBA choose when we have Furrow's Wind and B. Well, we can, but then we lose Furrow's Wind, and we don't want to lose Furrow's Wind. Yeah, so we only have 29 shoes and 40 bombs we started with, so we need to make use of them uh, as most efficiently as possible. So this is really tricky to actually figure out 
where to use bombs and where to use chews for this um, for this shadow and spirit section because spirits can be after this. So I went through a lot of revisions. I don't know. I think we spent like a month trying to figure out. I like that at least. Like exactly where to use bombs, where to use chews. And this guy's quite silly. He just jumps off immediately. Oh. Pause, champ. <laughs> oh, come on. What? It's slow. Man. Alright, well, at least that was cool enough to make up for it. Yeah, I wanted to make a thug off that guy without using explosives, so... Yeah. It, it is possible to get on the bell and then make it back up, but you need to jump slash for that and we don't have the weapon equipped. So, there's no bell this time. We're taking a little break from Shadow Temple to, uh... Finish up Water Temple. If you remember, we got everything in Water Temple, but didn't beat Morpha. And we're waiting till now because we have Frozen on B now, and that means we can do a faster cutscene skip. We also have bombs, which is uh, quite cool for this part right here, where we can uh, super swim into the loading zone. Nice. So here's another uh, blowing up bombs with a bow. So it's almost as good as Chews. Yeah. Not quite as good, but uh, it's, it's a lot better than waiting three and a half seconds. Mm -hmm. The main issue with it is it bow takes up a C uh, button. So we kind of had to really use bombs when we had an extra C button is really what mattered. And that means we can use that C button for bow and then use bombs in that section. So we should spin a bossy skip too. So that's a low height, low height ground clip, and um, we only need to do like what was it one hover? Yeah, just one and hover. Then, yeah. Just and then lose ISG. Yeah, you you just and, need to have like a, a certain combination of high downward speed and high horizontal speed to put to the wall there, and then like falling from a short hover gives you high downward speed. Getting hit by the bomb gives you high horizontal speed. Enough to clip through. This is a cool fight. Yeah, this is... This is nice. It works out to be marginally faster than equipping Hookshot for the fight, because we can have bow and bombs equipped instead to save yeah. some chews. So it works out to be just marginally faster. It's not, not by a lot. Oh yeah, you get to see the the correct Morpha texture here on N64, because <laughs> every other version messes it up a little bit. Oh, and you started right on right on the heart piece. Yeah, that is that's the nice thing about doing the jump slash from off there is that you can make the last one land on the heart piece. And then cutscene skip here. Back right to back to Shadow, where we yeah, left off. And that was, that was a, another benefit of like splitting Shadow up so that the cutscene skip, since you had to, you were going to warp back here anyway, get, going to do Morpha here, um, let you combine the cutscene skip and the warping back. Here we start with with Hover Boots in order to save a pause. A little bit slower starting starting the has but save time overall. Yeah, because otherwise we'd have to unequip half us and then re-equip them again and then unequip them again. So we can do a weird shot for that sculpture. Oh, 
Lots of bomb and bow in this section. Yeah, I love the bomb bow stuff. So, so here we're actually losing a little bit of time as well because it's actually possible to just hess through this gate. Um, we do an A slide, then just stop it and go into a hess, um, which loses about the amount of time a roll takes. Um, because that's and that section is really cool there. <laughs> yeah, you can hardly even tell what's going on. Yeah, so that was like uh, five chews in the span of a second or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was like one a twisted chew to kill the Skulltula, and then one to like jump on the spikes, and then one to weird shot to the Skulltula from the top. What, yeah, one to... What is it? One to kill the Skull, one to climb cancel. Oh yeah, climb cancel, that's it. One to weird shot. I feel like I'm forgetting one, but yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was a homework fucky for that strat, I think. Um, and a few other strats in, in Shadow. Well, Shadow's to him a funky for everything that's fast. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's Shadow Temple. Now we're on to Spirit. We're actually going to grab uh, Nero's Love first thing. Oh, N64. <laughs> that one's awesome. Every every single uh, uh, destructible wall lacks so much in N64. Yeah. This is the last fairy spell. A little more. The, the, oh, the fair, actual spell. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, fairy spell. There's still one more fairy yeah, left, yeah. But, but it's the last fairy spell. And uh, we need to figure out how to get to Mirror Shield from here. Because. Uh, Going up inside Spirit is kind of slow to get to Mirror, mirror Shield. The adult side is uh, not very fast. So instead we'll head up here and uh, delay this token, and then use this token for a hookshot jump. Um, if you saw the MST task, you'd say, hey, that looks slower than the MST task, and you'd be right. But uh, the way the MST task does it doesn't actually collect this, the token. Since this is 100%, we do need the token, so we need to do it in a specific way to get the token. We can do uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah. the test or the slide across the gap there, and then he public boots on here, <laughs> so slow turnarounds. Um, nice. To get to Mirror Shield. That's right, also came from MST Taz. Yeah, and then land uh, right in front of the chest with the Forest Wind so we can open it immediately. So keeping cover boots on there is also nice because we have to wait for a, a daytime cycle in this section as well. And even if it was slower, uh, Skipping the two pauses to equip and unequip other boots, um, with, that would uh, cause it would it cause more cause more time to pass to keep other boots on. Yeah, because because we do want time to pass a little, because otherwise uh, we're gonna have to play another song song later. So it's actually faster to have the time pass a little. So this uh, key with fire arrows. It's a little bit faster than one of the other options um, in Child Spirit. And we can do Mega Flip off this Beemos to get to the Spirit Entrance, which is the faster way to uh, um, get here. Which is a fast and interesting way to get back to the beginning. Yeah. 
And then uh, we do some clip outs here and, and head over to the child side. And again, uh, we want to do every everything that child is supposed to do, we want to do as adult, if possible. Including spirit child side. This first shot's really cool, where you hookshot the uh, climbable wall behind the door, and then you can go back and forth through the door to load the room properly. And also, uh, it's, it's very good because it ends you out of bounds, so the pause there is out of bounds, so there's nothing to do on the screen, so it's a really fast pause on the N64. Because pauses on N64, uh, it draws the still image, and it takes longer the more uh, vertices on screen. And when you're looking at a void, then there's no vertices loaded. Because we got the um, key from the boulder room early, we're going to get uh, the key from playing ZL here. And then, really fast boskies get there. With no items, pretty much, just, just a hammer. Well, you say really fast, but actually we did a backflip too many, so oh. that's also a place we lost time. You did an extra backflip? How could you? Yeah, I did two backflips. Oh, my funky, the, the goat only does one. And I'm just not built like him. And then uh, here, thankfully, Hammer does the expected damage to <laughs> the bosses in Spirit Temple, so we don't have to do any, like, 36 stabs or something. Yeah, rare rare, uh, rare footage of Hammer damage behaving normally. And, and then, uh, uh, so, so that cutscene skip, that's another one of the um, uh, glitchy, glitchy wall grabs um, and falling out of bounds cutscene skips, where... Trying to like uh, jump towards the door there causes a glitchy ledge grab, which if it happens at the same time the cutscene happens, then Link falls through the ground and voids out, and then you don't have to watch the full cutscene there. And then it's time for an infamous boss in speedrunning. Because the first phase is effectively RNG. Um, you get you have these two witches that are flying around, and you wanna, you know, have them fire their beam as fast as possible, so you can reflect it to, towards the other one. But uh, they're kind of hard to get to do that. But uh, thankfully for Taz, that's no problem. So we just uh, say, uh, "Hey, fire, fire your laser as fast as possible." Okay. And then they do that, and then we just do that like uh, four times. And we also want to have them be as close to each other as possible, so the 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 beam that's reflecting off the mirror shield does, doesn't have to travel as far. Because if I'm hitting the, the the fire one here, right next to the ice one, it's a lot closer than hitting it all the way at the other side. So it saves a lot of frames traveling close. Um, Manipulating the the fire one here by by spinning to actually do the last shot faster than the ice one could have done. So it's a triple into a very fast fourth shot, which is actually faster than a quad because a quad would require the ice one to do a little circle. And then uh, phase two is pretty standard. Uh, they always do three of the same one uh, at the at the at the beginning while they're at full health. Um, so the only thing we have to do is make sure they fire as fast as possible and don't move. Which uh, is what we're doing here. Oh, well, I guess we also have to make sure we don't get fire, because fire lags a lot more on N64 than ice. Yeah, and uh, also the way uh, to make them not move is if you are really close to one of the 
uh, other side platforms and then try to shoot hookshot uh, to make her spin um, before she chooses the next platform to go to. Uh, she can actually choose to like stay at the same platform and not not move, which saves a lot of time or saves like two seconds, I think, per phase. Yeah, it just I mean it just skips her her movement from one platform to the next. I don't, yeah. I don't know how long it takes, but yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not huge, but it's definitely faster. It's a it's a quality of life time save. Yeah. The less time you spend on Twin River, the better. I see a couple of people in your chat not behaving, CFG. I don't know Can what do they're something doing. About them? There needs, I guess, some people want to get banned. Bryce, Bryce taking logs of all of you. You're all getting banned after the stream. And then uh, he used Forest Wind to casting skip again, and uh, it puts us back to the Fairy Fountain, which is. A little closer to this uh, skull tool than the spirit temple is, so it's a nice little time save. Um, yeah, and then we just uh, do some ace lights up some enemies to save some explosives to, to leave here. Because again, we are very tight on explosives in this section because we can't uh, just uh, RBA them whenever we want. It doesn't matter if we lose a few frames from not using. Explosives instead, because we still have to wait for a time of day later on. In this area, time doesn't pass, so... Nice use explosives to go a little faster. In this area, every oh, There's also no it. enemies. There's no enemies either, so... We don't really have an option. Oh, there's, there's levers. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. They, they're a bit fine. They spawn in, like, segmented areas. Yeah, just a classy wasteland has. Yeah, that has uh, over the um, last part there. You need this. You need like a very uh, wide angle to not get your Hess canceled when you're going down the river there. You can't just like go straight at it. Yeah, no, it's basically like falling off a ledge. It just kills your speed. Yeah. And we get caught on purpose to get to the top of the uh, fortress, so we can. Like, do it downwards instead of upwards. It's easier to jump down than it is to jump up. Also, it's just really annoying to get backwards through the gate. <laughs> yeah, I think your only option would be like yeah. a hover ground clip, right? Yeah, it's not really, not really good options for yeah, that. Plus, to do plus, uh, getting caught has the other benefit later yep. on in the run that I guess yeah, we'll talk about exactly. at the end. That's right. And uh, thankfully, these guards also take uh, expected damage from hammer, so the fights are fairly quick. Uh, I think RGA does it with like sticks and ISG uh, or something. Yeah, it, it's like sometimes you do sticks and ISG and try to run around them. Sometimes you try to get them in the torch and uh, with hookshot and get them stuck there and do crouch stabs. It's Kind of preference, kind of consistency. Both kind of suck. Yeah. I mean, these fights just suck in, in general. But uh, yeah. for this, we just want to jump slash them as fast as possible and then stab them as fast as possible. And uh, yeah, it, they basically don't have any time to play. Yeah. Yeah, there's another section that's not the most fun because these guys talk very slow. Yeah. But if you're noticing, I'm actually standing up in between each of the crouch steps. 
and it's uh, actually manipulation because it tricks them into thinking they can retaliate, so they like let go of the guard for a frame. Oh, nice! I didn't know that. Because, because when you're when you're holding R, they think you're shielding, so they won't try to retaliate. So when you let go, they'll, they'll try to retaliate for one frame until they realize that they're probably just not going to. <laughs> so it looks really funny when I'm stabbing them. Oh, yeah, and there's also a thing where uh, if you when you kill the guards really fast, uh, you can't actually talk to the carpenters immediately. Which is why he's uh, running out of the cell before talking to them, because you just can't talk to them immediately. Yeah. You're going too fast. They want you to it's the they speed limit. I think it's because they have to like finish the watch out animation thing they do. Yeah, something like, like that. Oh, watch out! And also try to manipulate the keys to fall in a semi-favorable favorable direction for, for all the doors. How many pauses in this run? More than two. So this is also the the rare green Gerudo. I don't recall seeing her in green clothes very often. She changes her yeah. clothes depending on what tunic you're wearing slash what gloves you have. Slash um, if you have a bomb in your hands. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, for some reason her... I, I think uh, a lot of people think that uh, her tunic color changing is like an easter egg, but I'm fairly sure it's actually a bug because... Uh, her tunic color will also change depending on if you have a bomb, and also gauntlet color. Yeah. But I almost never see her her green, because usually you have like either Goron tunic equipped or... Yeah, or like gold gauntlets. gauntlets or something. Yeah, yeah then we just uh, witch her twice, Iris, real quick, and then uh, Ferris went back outside where we placed it. And, uh... Place for us one more time. Surely this is the last one. And then we're actually leaving. Without doing Guru Archery. So here's a funny little segment where it doesn't really matter how fast we go to some degree here. Um, because the time of day works out so that it's just faster to waste time here than it is to play Sun Song. So we can waste the time a little bit and oh, just we got do RTA some style movement. Casual CFD movement there. <laughs> Casual <laughs> placing a bomb down manually. Yeah. So it's it's this is faster than playing Sunsung, so we it's it's because Sunsung takes a while to play, so it's faster. Yeah, it's just like the time it's like play. almost ten seconds. I think it's like close think, to seven or eight. If it's not uh, in an area where time doesn't pass. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, seven or eight. That's what I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I I think uh, Bleeny posted timings in the Discord at some point. But yeah, so we enter, we, we first went back the, well, the earliest possible frame, the, the exact frame it turns day. We first went back to Gerudo Fortress so we can do some, some archery. And uh, we're doing this archery as fast as possible, so uh, there'll be no 2000s. Yeah, again, this is very serious. No jokes. Yeah. No jokes here. The swag. Cool. So for for the, the second games here, you can waste four arrows. And then you can 
just barely, like, if you mash as fast as possible, you can waste four, and then you can just barely fit an arrow in over over the tent there, and then you can waste another one, because you can't actually get that, and then you can put the rest in. So we're wasting four, then hitting one, then wasting one, and then hitting the rest. And we're delaying collecting the quiver with this bomb chew, so that she doesn't think she's given it to us. So that we can get it again. Yeah, and then uh, leaving the area without uh, looking at her makes it uh, never set the flag for her giving it to you. Yeah, it's a similar concept to the um, bullet bag upgrade dupe in Lost Woods. Yeah, and again, we waste four and shoot one just above the, the like top or tent or whatever it is. And the reason why we do this is because instead of getting the other upgrade in CAC, is because you're just never going to be there again. Last time we were there, we didn't have a bow, so we need to do this instead. Also, getting 1500 is actually faster than getting 2000, because if you get 1500, you're likely getting it with your last shot, which makes the game end earlier than if you uh, get the points before shooting the last shot, which you would have in the 2000 case. Yeah, you have to actually intentionally wait at the beginning to get 2000. Also, the, the, the game, when it ends, it ends either on Empty Quiver or on points. Uh, and when it ends on em Empty Quiver, it then... Because we empty our Quiver before we get 1500 points, so the game ends early, and then it sees we actually had 1500 points, and then goes, oh, you get the reward anyway. So, so yeah. it ends a little bit faster by, by checking for Empty Quiver first, before checking for points. Yes, yeah, so like I know. The, uh, uh, go ahead. It skips like the the fanfare of "Oh, you won." Yeah. Thing. But yeah, so for people complaining about no ass chest, yes, it, it's very unfortunate. But uh, the primary use of ass chest is to get spooky mask, which skips part of the uh, mask trade quest. But because of the text transfer glitch used for uh, selling bunny hood early, that is just better in every way. So. Unfortunately, ass chest is a casualty of a faster route. Yeah, TTG just skips the the entire trade quest instead of just some of it, so it's just better. Okay, yeah, now we are in uh, cutscene, the longest cutscene in the game, but. An upside about this cutscene is that it does activate uh, BA. And just before uh, warping away, we did put a bottle on our B button. So this cutscene mm -hmm. will activate BA, and we will get a new item on B when it's over. Yeah, coming up here, uh, I think this next scene is uh, a flashback back to like uh, the part where Zelda's running from Hyrule Castle. And that flashback does actually turn Link into Child. And so because it counts as, it, because it makes you child and then back to adult, it actually fully completes the necessary steps to activate Bottle Adventure. Yeah, and the item we had on Sea Ride last time we went adult was Gorn Mask. So it'll look at Gorn Mask and take the value from that and put on B button. And Gorn Mask is, I think the value is currently like 117. Yeah, Gor Gorn mistaken. Mask looks at, uh, so is it Swords and Shields or Boots and Tunics? I always get it Boots switched and up. Tunics for Gorn Mask. Boots and Tunics, right. Yeah, yeah so so uh, it's going to look at the current uh, total total value of all the Boots and Tunics, which is, what is it? It's Is it all all six of them right now? So we have everything except for Gorn Tunic. Yeah, Gorn Tunic. Right. And right. that's vital. Yeah, if we have Gorn Tunic, we get an item that doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, so right here, because this is in-game engine, uh, this counts as going back in time, and then now it's back to forward in time, and now Bottle Adventure is activated, and something new is on the B button. Whatever this item, new... whatever item, hundred and something, whatever it is, is. Yeah, hundred and seventeen, and it's uh, not a real item. The item just stops at like fifty or something. Or whatever it stops at. I, th I think the, it goes the, like 90-ish. Well, the real, like... items you get, real items you can use. Stuff okay, like real items you can use. I think it's it's like 59 or 60. Mm -hmm. And then after that, 
it comes like with all the quivers that'll immediately crash yeah, or whatever. It's item icons that aren't like real usable items, and then it's like glitch stuff that's just garbled, missing no pixels. Yeah, and 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 approximately one in four of those items or something will work as eye drops as a side effect, mm -hmm. apart from just being a garbled item. And eye drops, that sounds like a pretty useful item, considering that is the final item in the trade quest for Bigoron Sword. That does sound like it could be useful. I guess we'll see what we use it for. Yeah, the pancake said it's like every four items is is you something that acts like eye drops, and the way it works out is, um, it, uh, for these items which look at uh, certain flags on your quest status or equipment, like Goron Mask does. There's you need to have the first item in in that uh, list of eight items, but not have the second one. So in this case, you need to have Goron Tunic, but not. Right, you need to have Fukiri Tunic, but not Goron Tunic. That will put you on the right uh, number mod 4. Um, for those who know what that means. I don't really I'll bother explaining it, but... Um, it turns out that there's a, like, a direct correspondence to which items give you eye drops and just those two um, equipment. So it doesn't yeah. really matter what the other items are. And then now you see the, uh, the garbled text, or garbled pixels on, on the B button. It's different from, I like how it's different, uh, garbled item from, from the one that's gotten in RTA. Yeah, I think RTA gets item 253. Yeah. I feel like every route gets a different garbled icon, depending on what works out. Yeah. But in the end, they, they both act as eye drops, so they're effectively the same. Just depends on what number works out best for that route. And then we're heading into the double defense fairy fountain without a strength upgrade. Oh, well, without Golden Gondor specifically, I suppose. It's not just any strength upgrade. It will be our last fairy. So now there's not much left. Yeah, so, RTA used um, Broken Goron Sword right, for the RBA, and that yeah. uses medallions. So, that would be very convenient because we actually do have Broken Goron Sword in, in the inventory right now. Um, but it doesn't work for Eidor Cutscene because if you equip it on Child Sea Right, that's a trade item. And when you go, um, I guess I should say, you can't equip it normally as a child, you have to equip swap it. And it's also a trade item, so when you, the flashback happens in lighter cutscene, the game actually updates child's equips. So if, say, you equipped it over Din's Fire, child C Ray would actually get upgraded to Din's Fire, because it notices that there's a trade item equipped there and it should get uh, changed. Yeah, oh, it's, here's it's a... all, all trade items and bottles yeah. always get uh, yeah. updated properly. Another trick um, found by Homer Funky. Uh, this cover slide into Gans Castle. Yeah, for a long time it was thought that was it was too long to make with a hover slide, and you had to actually do a hover. But I guess that barely makes it. Yep, yeah, it's it really cool. It's actually it changed the route when it was it. found. <laughs> so we were originally going to do um, stuff in a different order, and then this actually made it faster to uh, go to Gans Castle like this. Oh, and also that was a cool uh, entrance point glitch there, where uh, after opening the door, the door didn't actually fully close because uh, they were a little bit too far away from the door. And uh, that makes the your entrance point get set in a little bit of a different position after voiding out here. It's very useful. And then, this, then we... Yeah, it's going to make just Link walk, walk out of through the door. Walk, walk through the wall. And then with uh, the main room unloaded, the barrier is unloaded, so you can easily mega flip onto an extra loading zone for 
entering Ganon's Tower, for some reason, the like entire uh, right wall of Ganon's Tower is a loading zone to go in. And uh, yeah, with no barrier blocking it, it's very easy to just mega flip to it. Yeah, and that's required because we can't uh, warp out in the other. Uh, yeah, yeah. Areas it, of if Castle. you try to play a warp song in Ganon's Castle, it says like your notes echoed far and nothing happened. I did not know what it said, so I'll just say that's exactly what it says. <laughs> yeah. Now, finally, time to, to get Goron Tuna. Yeah. Finally, need to get it. It's imperative we didn't get it until now, but uh, we have to get it at some point. Oh no, my no, god, it's that was zero, zero, zero. A little zero, zero, yeah. zero right there. It's very close to uh, upright, exactly. Nice. So if you have a bad nudge, maybe it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very convenient that that one item we needed to delay is actually close to uh, the Gorm Sword, where we need to go now, because that, now we have eye drops. Yeah, so that's our last so uh, If we needed piece. to like, delay uh, Zoro Tunic, that'd be kind of awkward, having to go get Zoro Tunic at this point. Yeah. That's a bit out of the way, yeah. Uh, that is nice. Okay, we now have our last heart piece. As we have, uh, I think it's five skulls left as well. So we are, we are approaching the end now. And then here on 1.0, you actually have oh, yeah. to leave the area after. Um, what's it called? Interacting with with Big Gorn the first time because yeah. for some reason 1.0, you can just like do the entire trade quest in one sequence here. Um, that doesn't... Oh, on 1.2 you can do the entire trade quest in one sequence. On 1.0 it doesn't work. Um, I'm not sure why. I'm guessing it's just... Uh, he checks when you uh, enter it's the a, It's area. a strange thing to change, yeah. Basically you need to have a prescription or something higher in the, your trade slot in order to... Uh, in order for Big Arm to accept eye drops. And on 1.0, you need to specifically actually enter the area with that item in your inventory. So when we first entered the area, we had a uh, Broken Goron Sword. We gave it to get Prescription, but then we need to reload the area to actually, um, for him to actually accept eye drops. Yeah, on, yeah, on really 1.2... 1, 1, uh, 1.0 just has some jank. 1.2, he'll just uh, accept the Prescription, even if you end up with uh, Big Goron Sword, so... I don't know what was changed to make it work better on 1.2, but uh, that's the thing that works better on 1.2. We need to play yeah, some just... song here to trigger three day transitions to get um, Goron Sword. And while we do that, we can do some more RBA. So we uh, got more Chews with Posey Right, and now we're RBAing Fire Arrows, which will um, give us the Fire Temple boss key and the map, I'm pretty sure. But you can imagine that one of those is more useful than the other one. So there's Big Orange. Yeah, the map. <laughs> really, and really I'm going map. Got, can't get lost in Fire Temple now. We play one more Sun Song to turn at night because there's some um, new skulls here. Although we killed one of them already, so we can just long shot the token. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that that uh, shot on the skulls was really cool. Both the arrow shot and the long shot shot there. Um, so these rocks don't actually have collision if you're far enough away. And so the first arrow shot was far enough away so that it, it could go through the rock and kill the Skulltula. And then the long shot shot was far enough away, and same with that, uh, the other long shot. So nice little... It, it's actually convenient that it's uh, like right outside of long shot range, or just inside of long shot range, I should say. Here's another low height ground flip in order to yeah. skip the EC intro cutscene. Normally it's, it's watch when you... Load the ball. Slightly faster to not watch the intro cutting and do the, the clip through. But it looks really jank. It also is really jank, but So we delayed these goals until now because when we heard before we didn't have power boots. And we're also really low on explosives at that point. Um 
That said, I'm not 100% sure which one's actually faster. I, uh, whether to get it earlier right now. The original idea was to actually um, enter this dungeon to use Furrow's Wind. But then the route changed, and we need to uh, use Bolero out of this dungeon instead. Yeah, either way, it's uh, another benefit of doing it later is that you don't have to leave the room manually, like if you were doing it earlier in the run. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Also, the 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 skull set, uh, the up by the scarecrow that we got with the long shot is actually really precise to hit. It depends on the skull set animation, like where it is in its uh, rotation. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't recommend it for RCA. <laughs> And we do get to use a uh, big horn sword here a little bit. Is that that is one hundred skulls? Yep. There we go. An... Almost finished now. Oh, toxic oxygen uh, asked if you skip magic drop pickup. Did you never pick up a magic drop the whole run? You never got magic, no. Nice. Good, uh, like two second time save. Yeah. That's where we got the fire table boss key. Faster than skipping it. We we were very close to running out of magic at some point, but since we got double magic, it it was wasn't. Uh, yep. Actually, in this yeah. Game. Green potion is not a magic drop when we don't drink. Green it. potion is absolutely not a magic drop. <laughs> Yeah, that's some lag. This yeah, fight's so... good on M64. Holy! I'll just wait until I see Ganon. Uh, but yeah, be... so uh, the Bulbadia fight there. So Bulbadia has two hitboxes. Uh, one for the one that pops out of the holes, and the other one that flies around. And uh, the one that flies around stays under the last hole that she flew into. So uh, by bombing that hole right in front of you, it's actually doing damage to the flying Bulbadia while the popping out of the hole with is right in front of you. Then you just keep doing damage to it, stun the Vodja real quick, do the final hit, a really fast fight. Now it's time for, um, well, the last tar container. And the last medallion. Yep. And the last bottom. The last, yep. <laughs> yeah. so Ocarina Island is here again is... to gain control uh, during the blue warp. And then attempting to go out of bounds and hit the loading zone from behind right as the blue warp tries to take you away. And it wrong warps into Ganon's castle. Here we can do a hover to flip out of bounds above the door I entered the room from. Do a slash to barely hit uh, the loading zone to the bridge at the very end of the collapse. Yeah, it's actually there's a hover you can do out of bounds, but that doesn't work on N64 because out of bounds 2 crashes. Mm -hmm. But uh, the jump slash works just fine. And the kiss. No double kiss though. Well, it's hard to get the double kiss fast. Because then yeah. you have to be right in the middle both times. True. It's faster just to drop the bomb, like, like I did. So there was a cutscene that was skipped there, because the flag for getting caught in Guru Fortress is shared with the flag for having watched um, that big collapse cutscene. Since we got caught, we didn't have to watch that cutscene. Yeah, it's a very convenient um, flag flag overlap that just allows you to get a free minute time save. And for, for anyone wondering like how that doesn't affect uh, casual gameplay, 
if the uh, if if the collapse cutscene if the collapse sequence is triggered normally, then it unsets that flag. Yeah, and we also just had uh, a couple of bombs left here at the end, so we could uh, super slide into this cutscene to keep our sword. Which yep, is, and then, uh, I, uh, I don't think it's actually faster than just using a hammer, but on the I think right it's side, it, uh, faster to, or not depending on if it's if it costs an extra pause or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. because because we need yeah. the the bombs for the super slides anyway, uh, it's. Because we need bugs to wrong warp, choose to hover, and uh, bombs to super slide and get ISD fast. So we skip equipping ham hammer by yeah. equipping these items and stuff. And then this saves time in uh, the first phase of Ganon because normally the first phase of Ganon all your weapons are reduced to one damage. Uh, the exceptions are Master Sword and Deku Sticks because you're not supposed to be able to use those in the first phase, but. With this, you can use Master Sword, and so you get Ganon down in three hits instead of the normal ten. And then this phase is normal. And Jump Slash is the fastest. Is normal. Yeah, this uh, Jump Slashing is the fastest way to hit his tail because um, his tail can be pretty high up in the air when he's initially vulnerable, and a Jump Slash is pretty high. And he's down. Man, with, all, that with with those uh, tiny optimizations you missed, you could have got 306. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you want to talk about the timing? Yeah. Okay. So, so this timing, <laughs> the timing is a bit weird. So, uh, the way that tasks normally are timed is from uh, power on to last input necessary to get to the the end screen which uh, includes some of the last text boxes in this final cutscene. Because the way tasks work is they're supposed to all be exactly in the input file. Like, er the input file is supposed to do everything. Um, so tasks do count, like, ending inputs. So, like, a true task timing would actually add the next three minutes or something, so it'll be closer to 310. But then RTA timing, we don't count the intro, and I did count the intro for this, so RTA timing would actually be, like, three minutes lower. So RTA timing would be, like, 304. Maybe 303, like high 303. So, so. for the encode on Bishawk, which is what most tasks use, the final time is 307.24.17. Um, task timing. So from power on to last input is 3 hours, 7 minutes, 24 seconds. And some frames. Um, for RTA timing, it is 3 hours and 1 minute, 17 seconds. So yeah. very, very close to being sub free, but not quite. And there. then and then on VC, so VC is actually even faster, and VC gets like three I think it was three oh three forty I timed it at on VC. Which I think might mm. be sub three. Wait, I can actually here, you know let me I need to do a quick I'm gonna do a quick it, uh check and see if it's actually the sub RTA VC. It, yeah, it me, probably sub threes on VC could just because of how much lag it would say. Yeah, let me let me check real quick. Yeah, that's true. I have the video. <laughs> Run it back on VC. That's with 1.0 on VC. So yeah, it, really it is. Yeah, 1.0 on VC <laughs> is cheating. So yeah. that isn't really correct to say. Okay, 250 to uh 303.42. So it'd be like three three flat high high 300. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. Which also, um, oh, maybe with more precision. that is also extremely close to the uh, Hundo SRM record on VC. That's I think true, it's like, yeah. I think it was like yeah. 10 seconds off. So, yeah, a lot of interesting interesting timing notes for this. <laughs> but yeah, this, this task is 40 minutes faster than the last 100% uh, task, which is yep. uh, quite a big improvement. Um, but it's also been eight years, and there's been a lot of new tricks, and 
we know more about the game now than we do uh, than we did five years ago. Um, yeah, especially in the last few years, with uh, there's been so much knowledge gained in the last few years with decomp and being able to test thoroughly with GZ. Um, and people are just like so much more knowledgeable at all the technical aspects of the game too. So yeah, that old task didn't have RBA even, even though it was known because it wasn't yeah, used at that time. It was that, yeah. yeah, the, the RBA situation was weird with that task was because the RTA rules at the time, I think it was at the time of starting that task, the RTA rules banned RBA, but then during the task, we unbanned RBA for RTA runs, but they were already doing it without RBA, so they just finished it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably the biggest uh, difference in terms of like, glitches that were used in the task, I think, because RBA is also allows BA, if you include that. That was huge in this task. Yeah. BA is yeah. massive. I mean, uh, equip swap... Also saves Equip a bunch swap. of times and yeah, and, the uh, big pro dupes. TTG as well. Yep. Tech service is huge yeah. as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean this. I think uh, overall, it's uh, it's pretty good. There's a couple of spots where it's <laughs> losing a, a couple of seconds or a couple of frames, but uh, I yeah, don't think it it's... can be much faster than this. Yeah, this sort of long run is never going to be really optimal, I think. Yeah, it takes way too much effort. Yeah, and there's way too many, way too many variables that like no one, no one person is going to make sure that they know the absolute fastest way to do every single thing, and some people, are, someone's going to miss something. I also uh, usually say that uh, any task that is ever released is uh, outdated on release. Yeah, that that's very true. Um, because there will be new stuff found during the making of the task, or yeah. you you have missed yep. something and, that. So, yeah, and, and to be fair, like we were making fun of some of the things, some of the like minor optimizations that were missed. But honestly, it probably didn't add up to that much. Like I, as, I I'd uh, be surprised. Yeah, if it added. Yeah, I I mean seconds. I think I went through it and was like. Okay, maybe this is uh, twelve seconds if I add it all up, and it's like yeah. okay, well, yeah, that's like that. That sort of thing I'm thinking about, right? Yeah, that's very understandable. That that's not big, a big deal at all. Mm -hmm. so it's great to have this out, even though it's great to have something out that's like ninety nine percent, or maybe even ninety nine point five percent optimized. Yeah. Right? Do I have button counts? Oh, I don't have. I don't think I have button counts. I think it, it has the uh, re-records though, right? That's interesting. How many? There is. Uh... Okay, so it is measured in inputs, but that's that can be multiple inputs in the same frame because it can be like uh, you're holding, you're pressing B and holding control stick, and but there's two hundred and twenty thousand six hundred and twenty-six inputs. Um, and that is 543,450. Uh, I, so, I, I think you cut out there, the middle of saying that n that number. Uh, oh, I can, the middle I can of saying 500 in, something thousand. I'll just put it in chat. Okay. Wait, stream froze? Yeah. The stream freeze? Oh my god, real stream really froze? Like, I mean, I think it's fine now. Okay, At the cool. very end. Yeah, very end, or whatever. I have a local recording. Local recording saves everything. It's fine, yeah. Reminder to locally record your speedruns and your task premieres. Yeah, um, did anyone uh, count how many chews? Uh, well, not you. Oh yeah, I, I saw the the two counts kind of. Uh, I saw people were off, were yelling at ends. each other in chat like it was this number. No, it was this number. No, you were wrong. Because of course Twitch chat can't count. I think there's about 400. In my estimation, a couple days ago. Oh yeah, Keith has just checked the macro for the inputs. So there you go. Uh, ignore the D pad up, D pad down, D pad left, right. <laughs> That's, uh, 
that's the GC uh, inputs that it's for some reason sometimes saving and sometimes not. And yeah. start start nine hundred eighty one. Surely there was not like five hundred pauses, right? Were you mashing start? Well, if I'm mashing start 11 frames in a row to unpause as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The, bu the button presses are not optimal. <laughs> so, you mentioned no magic drops in this run. I'm pretty sure there's also no bomb drops at all. Oh, nice. Kind of interesting. Uh, just choose your thing. Then it's unintentional uh, if we get yeah, a I mean, bomb drop. We didn't need them. We use 39 shoes after getting the no 30, 39 bombs after getting the 40 bomb bag. Yeah. So. Let's see what else. Oh, I have a question for chat at the very least. Did you guys enjoy yourself? Did you did you enjoy it? Who liked the tests? Did you guys think it was cool? I thought it was very cool. Kinda, it was alright. It was alright, I'll yeah. take it. <laughs> I think people liked it. Yeah, this was a great test. Yeah. yeah, it's again really great to see this being done. Yeah, I I'm I'm really happy to see like a, a new up-to-date test of this category as well. I'm also really excited to see how soon until it's a route changing glitch is found. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'll be tomorrow. I always feel like <laughs> it happens to come up right after you finish a big project. Yeah. But... I'll, uh... I'll make the encode public if people want to... Oh yeah, do that. I was, I was going to ask about that. Watch that. Um, it has significantly less lag than N64, <laughs> but uh, it's still not quite as good as uh, VC. Um, it's live there now, or should be. Yeah, go and watch. Go watch the real version. The macro is in the description if you want to try and play it back on your own uh, uh, N64s or. Yep. All you, all you need is uh, all you need is 1.0 GZ. Uh, you can get GZ at uh, practicerom.com if you don't have it. All you need is 1.0 version of that. You can play this back on your own. You can check out all the details of the tests on your own game. But yeah, uh, so that was a great test. So thank you very mm -hmm. much for making this. Yep. Everyone loved it. Thanks for showing it off. Yeah, really glad. Really of, glad um, to show it. Mm -hmm.